other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, 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 coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. (laughs) While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pre Game. I'm here with Merrick Matthews. Merrick, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, I guess the, the what's the uh, what's the 60 second spiel of how you got to Iowa? Uh, well, I'm an Iowa kid. Uh, I went to a small junior college called Indian Hills and was uh, thankful enough to have a couple good years there. And I was uh, grateful for the opportunity to come to Iowa. So how did uh, so if I got if I got my facts right, you you are almost done with baseball, right? Uh. Pretty close. Uh, I was, I mean, I was kind of searching for some places this summer, and um, luckily this came up, so I took the opportunity. I'm glad I did. Is that uh, Coach Marty and Coach Coach Heller making a call, and yeah, and it's getting you over here. Yeah. So, uh, what uh, infield, outfield, a little bit of? Uh, I've seen you mostly in infield, first base. Just kind of do whatever's asked of you right now. Yeah, a little bit of both. I mostly played the outfield last year, but um, probably mostly a first baseman. But I can play either. And so you got your first, uh, it seems like your first real time was, uh, I mean, I know you played in a midweek game or two, first real time was Jacksonville State, and you came in and made a, made a pretty good debut there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> what, uh, so what's it like, you know, I assume Indian Hills, you probably played all the time, you know, everyday player, and then here, you know, kind of getting the bench, you know, getting kind of a, getting kind of the finger point of, hey, you're in, what's that, what's that mindset like to change? Uh, yeah, you know, you just got to kind of stay ready, make sure your body's ready. And then, you know, whenever you do get your finger or your name called, you just got to make sure you're ready. And so is that, uh, uh, is it, is, you, you do kind of some stretching. I mean, I, see, I know you guys all watch the game and you're paying attention, but is there anything kind of specific that you're doing? Are you watching the other pitcher, kind of uh, seeing how they're, how they're trying to get guys out, that sort of thing? Yeah, I, yeah I'll yeah, watch the pitcher, and then uh, I, so I'll go back into the clubhouse and get in the heat for a second, warm, or take a jog or something, just to make sure my body stays hot. Yeah, we haven't had very many days no, where yeah. you're able to do that just no, in the yeah. dugout. <laughs> 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 so... All right, so now you said small town Iowa, Centerville, right? Centerville, yeah. All right, so I hear there's some uh, uh, maybe some some guides, some hunting things. Is that one of the things you like in your spare time? Yeah. Tell me about that, please. Uh, I'm a big deer hunter. Um, I love to do it. So anytime I'm back home, you most likely find me in a deer stand, bow hunting. Do you guys have? Does your family have? Uh, was it was it like a guide business? Yeah, thing? we have. Yeah, we have a bunch of acres, and we run hunters through. But yeah. Okay, so is that just kind of all the uh, all, all the counties there, or is that uh, just kind of right around Centerville and that? Uh, area? Mostly just Appanoose County. Okay, right there in Centerville. Yeah. You're uh, you're right down the uh, right down the highway from where I grew up. So, what else do you do for fun? Um, I like to fish. I love to play golf. Um, just I like to be outside. So anything outside, I, I enjoy. Okay, my conference meet a thousand years ago was at the uh, the little nine hole in Centerville. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So play there. Where else? Where else do you like to play golf? Uh, Honey Creek Resort. I don't know. If, uh, I actually worked there last summer on the grounds crew. I really enjoyed that. But uh, I played the course in Knoxville once. It's, it's all right. Pine Knolls. Yeah. 
mostly just stick around Centerville area. You know my old buddy Darren Fisher there at the golf course? Yeah. Yeah, so Darren... Darren, uh, I know Darren from Boss Landon when he went to yeah. Central College back in the day. So, all right, what else does somebody need to know about you? Um, I'm a twin. I have a twin sister. She plays softball at Indian Hills. Okay. So that's probably the most interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, for you to get, what's kind of, you know, is where, what are we, we're, we're six months left or six weeks left in the season or so. What's, uh, what's kind of some of your goals? What are you, what are you working on to try to get better every day? Uh, you know, just still just, I mean, just hitting, just trying to get better every day. And then, I mean, one of my main goals is I just want to win games. So, I mean, it, I don't really care. I mean, obviously I'd like to play, but if, if my role is in the dugout and all I want to do is win games, so whatever to help the team win. Just get uh, yeah. get to that good finish line. Yep. Sounds great. I know we're in the middle of batting practice here, so I'll let you go. But appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Mark Matthews. We'll be right back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you. Eight bushels per acre easier. And much harder for rootworms in the competition. Pioneer brand chrome products. Field proven and ready for yours. Visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season. Please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Today, the series opener with Michigan at Banks. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, uh, no midweek again uh, this week, so back at home, no travel, and, and ready to go for another conference series. Yeah, it's disappointing. It's really disappointing when you don't get to play the midweek games. Uh, the weather was terrible. Uh, you know, We were inside um, all week, didn't get outside for a practice. The outfielders went out yesterday um, you know, for about a half hour and took fly balls and Everybody else was indoors. I mean, we did our we did our best to simulate um, a game. We, you know, all the pitchers that would have thrown uh, against Bradley through a live set, um, simulated game in the cages, uh, split them in half, half on Tuesday, half on Wednesday. So our hitters got some live at bats in the cage, but not not something you want to do. You know, this time of year, you want to you want to be outside and play and see the guys get to play. Um, you know, we, but I feel confident that. The, the work we did um, was the best possible to put our guys in a situation to have success if they come in the game. Uh, before we get to this specific series, Coach, as we uh, look around the conference, what have you seen from the from the Big Ten Conference to this point outside of the Iowa Hawkeyes? Well, it, it, it's um, it's pretty balanced. Is I think the thing that you see is that um, you know Nebraska is the only undefeated team at this point. Um, you know we're sitting there four and two. Michigan's at four and two. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of good teams, but nobody has really stepped up other than maybe Nebraska uh, and showed that they could be a dominant team. I mean we've we've you know had our opportunity uh, last week on Friday. You know that was a game that that you know we should have got. I mean you got seven run lead in the early part of the game. I mean 
you'd like to think that's over on Friday, but it, it didn't. So that one, that one's one for us. You wish you had back the, you know, go back to the Friday game we lost against Purdue. That was, in my opinion, one where you just tip your hat, and sometimes the other team plays better than you, and, and they did. Um, and, and you can live with that a little better than the, the ones you feel like you give away. But, you know, we bounced back into the series. We put ourselves in a good place. Um, facing a Michigan team that's playing a lot better baseball lately than they, than they did early, and that's probably not even a fair statement, not being able to watch those games, because um, the schedule they played was brutal. Mm-hmm. I mean, they played as tough a schedule as anybody in the country, maybe the toughest. Um, so I said I, re- I sent a newsletter out each week, and I said to the to the group in the newsletter that don't 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 um, look at their overall record and, and and think it's indicative of the talent or how good they are because the real story is who they played and uh, went through all the teams they played and and the fact that they they beat Maryland twice last week, you know Penn State's not an easy place to play and they got two down there and um, and then. They they should have swept they should have swept Maryland they they blew a two run lead in the ninth or, or they sweep them um, so that tells you about the talent they have and they've struggled in the bullpen they've struggled with strikes at times even with their starters but they've kind of locked in on on four or five guys that are giving them quality innings and so the the plan for us is you know, the 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 guy we're seeing today is uh, is uh, a guy with great stuff. Um, Vigu. Yeah, Vigu, yeah. Vigu the, the, the right-handed freshman, a uh, very high-profile recruit. Um, you know, he's got a lot of arm side run, sink to his fastball, but he hasn't commanded it real well. They've they found success getting him in the zone with the cutter, kind of a lot like Marcus. You know, Marcus is, you know, default when things aren't going good, he's going to his cutter, you know, because mm-hmm. he feels like he can throw it for a strike. And that's what... That's what Vigu has done here and, and pitched better for them. Uh, it's going to be a layoff the stuff out of the zone day okay. for us and then hopefully do some damage with that cutter. And teams have. I mean, teams are hitting over 300 against it. Um, so hopefully the, the plan works out. I mean, he's one of those guys, though, that we talk about, man, you just hope he doesn't have that day of days when he's hitting with all of his stuff because it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there something, a special message to the, to the team uh, – to, to attack a Friday, lost a couple Friday games in a row. Is there any special message that has to go out to them? Or no, no, because basically, you know, I mean, the the issues we have have been free base related or you know pitching related, and um, you know, I felt like um, you know our team, our offense, our defense, everything like that has been great. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, definitely. I mean, we have we had 14, 14 or fifteen hits last Friday. Yeah. You know, and you have fifteen hits and nine runs on Friday. You, you, you need to win that game. Um, and we just, you know, we had, obviously it was a bad day. You know? I mean, it just was a bad day on the mound. And we had three, three, three good arms that really struggled and gave up a bunch of runs. And Minnesota uh, made us pay. You know, they had a lot of extra base hits. And um, but we bounced back and we played good. And, and so what we did is we flipped up the rotation. We're going to throw Kate over Mueller today, um, and then we're going to get Brody. Um, we were going to give him, you know, an extra two days, but he'll get an extra day now with the doubleheader tomorrow. Uh, we'll go Marcus uh, Morgan in game two. Uh, give Brody, uh, we gave him, that gave him an extra bullpen, a lighter, you know, had two bullpens instead of one to work on some things, hopefully get his slider back. Mm-hmm. Um, because even though the third inning was, was, a, was a bad inning from a results standpoint, the last two times Brody's taken them out, he's done a really nice job of finding ways to get guys out for two or three, four innings with his changeup and his, you know, his other stuff. Uh, he's always had his fastball to hang his hat on, or excuse me, his slider to hang his hat on. That's kind of his yeah, go-to yeah. pitch, you know. And for whatever reason, it just kind of disappeared. He he lost command of it, and um, and you know, the goal was to get that slider back because I feel like he gets the slider back the way he's throwing the changeup and the way he's he's um, you know, pounding the zone with his fastball, boom, we're, we're real close to just yeah. hopefully having him take off. And, um, you know, and that was the message to, to Brody. And he's, he's got a good mindset and had a good week of practice. And I think, um, I think he's going to have the slider back this weekend. And uh, Michigan isn't going to have the entire week to prepare for him. You know, they, they, they didn't announce their starter till late, so they didn't even find out uh, Brody wasn't starting till late. So I think that's another big, big part of it is that teams have been starting on Monday and just really grinding out sure. high velocity machines and spin rate machines and, and preparing for him. So um, we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, that's the, 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 that's what we're doing to try to 
switch things up and you know but Cade's gonna have to go out and do this do the things we talk about all the time and that's throw strikes and um, you know, limit the free bases, and that's what you have to do on Friday. Uh, this will be his first Friday start, Coach. Uh, he he's earned it though this season. Uh, he, he's yeah. earned that that in the spotlight start. What do you look forward to from Cade's start this afternoon? Yeah, just hopefully he sticks to his routine, routine and sticks to his his plan and just do what he's been doing and hopefully even eliminate more free bases. That's the goal with him because, you know, as good as Kate has pitched, I mean, it can be a lot better because he's still given, um, you know, too many free bases. And the thing that, that he's done is he's done a great job of working around them better than the others, you know, but, but still they've been there and, um, you know, just getting rid of the uh, what I call any, the inning eaters, you know, the, the, the two quick outs and then a four pitch walk and a hit by pitch and, you know, you eat up another 15 pitches when you should have been out of the inning, um, which is going to keep you in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's yeah, the goal. Sure. You know, you have you can, if you can just get the guys off the field and limit limit the free bases. That means you're in the game a lot longer because at least to this point, you know, teams have not hit Cade. Right. Uh, one stat that stood out to me, Coach. Michigan has the most strikeouts in the batter's box. They've got the most strikeouts in the Big Ten, and and your pitching staff is number two in the Big Ten in striking opponents out. This feels like a power matchup that could really favor us today. Well, it could for sure. Um, it could for sure. If 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 there what if those strikeouts aren't a big reason being the the pitchers they saw the first. You know, Arkansas, the Oregon yeah, State. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing I look at is that they're not going to be intimidated by anybody. Okay. All right. You know? so, so it's not it's not that that deep of a uh, th- that stat might not be yeah. as true as it I appears. Think, I think we w- that's one we won't know until the game okay. start. Okay. You know, and they just like I said, watching them, you know, in their scouting. I mean, they they they've been playing and swinging it pretty good. Okay. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks today. Okay, coach. Uh, offensively, sounds like a couple of big bats out of the lineup this weekend. Yeah, it's a, a next man up weekend for us, and really sad news that. Um, we're not going to be without Andy Nelson and, and and Sam Peterson, two of our best players in defensively and offensively, and um, you know dynamic players with speed and power, and you know the one-two punch at the top of the order, and you know Andy's our team, our offense has been solid all year, but it's really taken off uh, once Andy got healthy the first time because he was nursing a hammy early in the year, and once he got healthy and took over the leadoff spot, our offense has really been going and. Um, you know, I, I don't think they're you know season ending or anything like that, but it's just bad, bad timing for us. Uh, so how do we make up for that today? Who gets inserted into the lineup? Do you make any um, shuffling in the, in well, the lineup? There, there'll be two two guys. In, you know, the two guys in the lineup that are taking the spots going to be Blake Garen will play first base, and and then Will Mulfler is going to play left field. And Will's been doing a great job coming off the bench and giving his quality pinch hits and. Um, you know, he's a, a, a senior, a guy who um, has played a lot of a lot of baseball, been around. He's going to give you a quality at bat, and um, you know that's that's how we're going to go today. You know, with Reese, Reese, Reese is going to catch um, Cade, okay. um, and then Davis Davis Cop will be in the the DH the DH spot. But like I told the team, here's the deal: we don't replace them. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody has to do more than what they. Are capable. Everybody just needs to continue to do their one ninth and and do the things that you're good at and be the best version of you, and that'll be enough. Yep. And and that's that's what I hope uh, you know that you see is you don't see guys trying to do too much or trying to pick up the slack because it doesn't work that way. And um, you know they just have to go out and play. And um, you know we we talk about this at the beginning of the year that it's going to happen at some point in time, just the way it works. I mean you're going to be without a key guy. Uh, the teams that don't have the right mentality uh, are the teams that fold when that happens. And, you know, we we had, you know, a bunch of the guys that played last year when we lost Keaton Anthony, when we lost uh, Ben Tom, when we lost those guys, Jacob Henderson and those guys. Um, we just kept playing. Yep. And that's all you do. And that's all you can do. I'm sure that fired him up. Let's take it to the Wolverines today, Coach. Right. Thanks a lot, John. Head Coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Keller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. We're getting set for first pitch between Iowa and Michigan. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. 
See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. Iowa and Michigan on to the third Big Ten series of the season for the Hawkeyes. Iowa 4-2 and two in conference play, tied for third behind Nebraska and Illinois. But the Hawkeyes are in that tie with Michigan, also 4-2. and two. So that makes this a massive series, John Evans. And, and you're seeing a... a better Michigan team maybe than you're starting to start to come together a little bit like Iowa they've they've had some leads they've played some some super competitive games and then let them get away at the end and, and battled some injuries too so you're starting to see you're, you're seeing some similarities there but what it was a 21 or 23 series win streak that Maryland had heading into that series and and Michigan took them down two out of three and, and so a, a little bit better and and they got some great starting pitching last week and so It'll be up to Iowa to show some discipline and, and see if they can, uh, you know, we we'll talk about it all the time, break that chain a little bit earlier than, than Maryland was able able to. Again, another odd schedule this weekend. We'll play today. We'll have a doubleheader tomorrow be, because of forecasted rain on Sunday. So our doubleheader will finish the series uh, tomorrow. We don't believe in playing the schedule that was put out there. We're, we're, today's game being at two instead of four because of uh, BTN and then... Uh, and then, boy, another squirrely week of weather that, that make the uh, the weekend funny. Mental toughness. Just go out there <laughs> and uh, and play. All right, we'll step aside for today's national anthem. We'll be back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin. And if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown. And Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks. Compare with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. Oh, Saint a sad star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. National anthem in the books from Dwayne Banks this afternoon, set for. Iowa and Michigan will go with the starting lineup for the Michigan Wolverines as they will bat first this afternoon. They go with their trio of outfielders, their first three batters, A.J. Garcia in center, followed by Mitch Voigt and Steven Rustich. Middle of the order for Michigan, Colin Priest is their D.H. Dylan Stanton's at first base. Will Rogers will catch for the Wolverines today. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Cole Caruso, the third baseman. Mac Timbrook, the second baseman. And Kyle Dernetti, their shortstop, he'll bat ninth. The Hawkeyes about to take the field. Defensively will look like this. Raider Tello at third. Michael Seegers at short. Gable Mitchell's at second base today. Getting the start at first base is Blake Guerin in the outfield left to right. Will Mulfler in left. Kyle Huxdorf in center. Ben Wilmus in right. 
catching today is Reese Moore. We mentioned a couple of the injuries for Iowa this weekend will be without Sam Peterson and without Andy Nelson, two of the best uh, players that Iowa has right now uh, out in the field. They'll be out, unable to play this weekend. So we'll miss Petey in left and we'll miss Andy Nelson at first, but Will Mulfler and Blake Guerin will step in and do the job this weekend. The starting pitcher today on Friday is the left-hander from Iowa City, Cade Obermuller. Seven starts this season. Cade's 2-1 and one with a 3 ERA, 33 innings, 17 hits, 16 runs, just 11 earned, 23 walks to go with 38 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 156 against Cade. Has hit 11 batters. As you heard Coach Heller mention, he's done a nice job of kind of pitching around the traffic. You'd like to see him maybe... Uh, give a few less of those free bases and uh, maybe get a little bit deeper into a game here, especially on a Friday night. Friday afternoon, I guess we are. Yes. So Obermuller makes his first career uh, Friday start as we'll kick off the series with Cade and we'll go uh, Marcus tomorrow in game one and then Brody will finish up the series so looking forward to that shuffling and and coach heller talked about it a little bit that uh it was more of a, a strategy thing let's get brody some time in the in the uh, bullpen some extra work there and and cade is ready to go doesn't need too much extra work let's throw him out there on friday and cade's been cade's been consistent with uh, you know battling kind of showing showing he's ready to go and not that not that necessarily the other guys haven't but you know just Kind of give Brody a little bit of a reset too. You know, hey, you know, last two starts, teams have hit him a little harder than what uh, what he's used to seeing. So give it, give him a little bit of a break and a reset and get going. All right, as Michigan sends AJ Garcia to the box, let's pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. Michigan 12 and 17. They're four and two in conference play with series wins over Penn State and Maryland. Head coach of the Michigan Wolverines is Tracy Smith. Michigan is on a three-game win streak. Last year they were even 28 and 28. They were sixth in the Big Ten. These teams met twice at the Big Ten tournament last year. Iowa won both games. The first round game, Iowa is the three seed, beat six seeded Michigan 13 to three, and then would later meet for a chance to go to the championship game. Iowa beat Michigan 5 0 and eliminated the Wolverines from the tournament and advanced to the championship game against Maryland. They yeah, felt like Iowa had a huge advantage in that game with pitching, but Mar uh, Michigan did a really nice job. Uh, Iowa obviously threw the shutout, but Michigan did a nice job through the game. Lefty on lefty matchup. We're underway in Iowa City as Kate Obermuller deals a strike just below the letters. Last time Iowa hosted Michigan, 2018. Wow. Iowa took two of three in that series. Michigan was ranked seventh at the time. Obermuller deals strike number two. So he had the, the uh, COVID year in 2020, and these teams don't always play every Big Ten school. Teams met a, a few years ago in Ann Arbor. This is lined to the right side. Gable Mitchell leaps up and makes the grab for the first out. That was a pretty good 0-2 pitch, too, uh, out off the plate. And, and that probably made it where Garcia didn't exactly get the barrel on it. Hit it hard, but not uh, not right in the barrel to drive it into right center field. And gave Mitchell room to go back and grab it. Pretty much all in the strike zone there from Obermuller. All right, we'll see Mitch Voigt, starting right fielder today for the Wolverines. 336 hitter, check swing, he went around, went through the zone. Voigt leads the team in batting average, doubles, RBIs. He also has the most strikeouts for Michigan. Might be uh, might be the best two-way player in the Big Ten, though, as we see him pitch second game on, well, Saturday now against Brody. Swing and a miss, nothing and two. Voigt, when he pitches, we'll talk about it, but uh, he does have a complete game uh, this season. So you're, you're right on, John. He can... He can pitch and he can hit. He's down on the count, nothing in two. Obermuller comes set. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Off the end of the bat, foul over the right side. I believe, if I remember correctly, he pitched against Iowa in the Big Ten tournament that second game, I think. I think we did We did see him. 
He popped over from third base. He's shortstop now, or plays a lot of shortstop. No balls, two strikes. Obermuller looks in for the sign. Moore gives it to him. Cade's ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. High heater, and Obermuller gets his first strike out of the day. And like you mentioned, this is a team that's a little bit of a, not necessarily a free swinging team, but certainly they take their cuts. And so if Cade can miss some bats, he can get some strikeouts here. Two down for Steven Rustich. Right-handed hitter. Just outside for ball one. Heard this name last year when we were in Chicago. Yes, Rustich, a transfer from Northwestern. A lot of power for Rustich. Leads the team with nine home runs. He got 26 walks, too, so a pretty disciplined hitter. Teams also might uh, avoid him a bit, too, because he is such a good hitter. Fouled that off. It's one and one. Yeah, avoid 19 extra base hits. Rustich, 16. So right here, this middle of the order, well, I guess top of the order, 2-3, a little scary on that side. but Obermuller looks in. He's got the sign. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Outside for ball two. And you'll probably see Cade uh, stick to a lot of the off-speed stuff. Or try to stay away from having to having to get to the fastball count. 2-1 is high and out. That's ball three. Might be around that fastball count now. But this is one of those situations where Rustich can make you pay. He's got 287 average, but... You probably don't give in with a fastball here. You see if you can get him to chase or nibble on an edge. 3-1 is fouled back. Count will be full now. Did give him the fastball, kind of up and away. Rustich has... 22 strikeouts, third most on the team. Three balls, two strikes. Obermuller's got the sign. Out of the stretch, the left-hander is ready. Here's the pitch. Called third strike. Got him right at the knees. Obermuller with a couple of strikeouts in the first. Boy, that wasn't uh, that wasn't even close. I think he fooled Rustich, and who decided he was going to toss the bat and see if he could sell the umpire, but wasn't by and strike three called. One, two, three inning to start for Cade Obermuller. We get to the bottom of the first. Ben Wilmus, Kyle Huxdorf, and Raider Tello will be up for the Hawkeyes. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. and our full-service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants, and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. All right, the Hawkeyes coming to the plate after setting Michigan down 1-2-3. In the top half of the inning, so Iowa will send Ben Wilmis, Kyle Huxdorf, and Raider Tello to the box. Any of those players get on. We'll see Davis Kopp, the DH. Reese Moore bats fifth for the Hawkeyes. He'll catch. Gable Mitchell batting sixth at second base. Seven, eight, nine. Will Mulfler, Michael Seegers, and Blake Guerin. The pitcher today for Michigan. A freshman right-hander, Dylan Vigue. 
Oh, and two on the season in seven starts with a 7-16 ERA, 27 and two-thirds innings, 31 hits, 25 runs, 22 of those were earned, 27 walks, and 25 strikeouts. Opponents getting him at a 287 batting average. Fastball is going to be in the low 90s. Throws a slider off that. Also has a cutter that will work in there. So cutter kind of has some sinking action, kind of get down on it. Um, but had some trouble in Big Ten play so far. Two starts, seven and two-thirds innings, giving up 16 hits. So okay. Big Ten pitching has uh, been able to knock it, or Big Ten hitting has been able to knock him around a little bit. Iowa's offense among the best in the Big Ten, second in the league in team batting average at 320. Iowa's the best when it comes to slugging and on-base percentage. Here's Ben Wilmus. He takes fastball low and out for ball one. You look at Michigan, their pitching stats, they're 12th in the Big Ten out of 13 in ERA with 7.01 team ERA. Opponents are hitting 297 against the Wolverines, which is uh, last in the Big Ten. They allow the best. Well, it's 173 walks and 188 strikeouts. So, um, you know, a lot. When, when, when that ratio is one to one, that's that's a pretty tough, pretty tough nut there. Right. Strike one on the outside corner. Ben Wilmus takes it two balls and a strike. Wow, we're really going to have to be patient with home plate umpire Tim Cordell behind the plate today, aren't we? He's very delayed in his called strike action. Yeah, we'll have to hold on tight. <laughs> for Iowa fans that... 2-1 is hit on the ground is short. On one hop, gloved and thrown over to first base for out number one. Yeah, that felt like Iowa pitching. Hasn't been able to throw any strikes, so just for reference, Iowa has walked 159 batters. Michigan's walked 173. Mm -hmm. Now they have played three more games, but you know, similar similar numbers there, but by contrast, Iowa struck out 291, and Michigan struck out 188, so a mm -hmm. little different there. Here's Kyle Huxdorf. Kyle takes ball low and out. The other thing that's really helped out Michigan is even though they've put a bunch of guys on base, whether it's through hits or walks, defensively they've been outstanding, turning a ton of double plays. Mm -hmm. So they can help their pitchers out there, particularly the middle infielders have, have been able to flip balls around and get two outs with one swing. Hawks worked a favorable count. As Vigu tries to find the strike zone, can't. Ball three, low and out to Huck. This is, uh, the, the coaching staff felt very confident that the approach, if the Hawkeye batters stuck to it, could really give them the advantage today. Well, and that's, you saw him, Vigu fell behind Wilmus 2-0, was able to come back, get weak contact on the 2-1 pitch. Now, fell behind Huck 3-0. Now, see what Huck does with the 3-1 pitch here. Kyle betting 337 for the Hawkeyes. Has a wind blowing out to left for him today. Here's the 3 1 dropped in there for a high strike, 3 and 2. Sunny day with a few clouds. Mid 50s this afternoon. Wind rippling the flags over to left. I don't think it's out to left, it's over to the left field foul pole. Here comes a 3 2 to Huck. He rips it into left, and it is caught by the left fielder. Two down for the Hawks in the first. 104 off the bat, so good barrel there. Just unfortunately right right, uh, right to where Rustich was standing. Michigan wearing their standard maize and blue today. First pitch to Raider Tello's inside for a ball. They've got the blue tops, the dark blue tops, with Michigan spelled out in that maize color, that sort of highlighter yellow color across the chest. They've got their blue caps in the field. Gray pants for Michigan today. 1-0 to Raider, catches the outside corner. It's 1-1. One one. Iowa in their all-whites. Script Iowa spelled out in black across the chest. The Hawks are wearing gold caps in the field today. One ball, one strike. Base is clear for Tello. Here's the pitch. Ground ball left side. This will be a tough play. Fielded by Caruso. He'll throw on the run to get Tello at first base. So both teams go down one, two, three in the first. We'll go to the second scoreless between Michigan and Iowa. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. 
Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second in Iowa City, scoreless with Michigan. Nate Obermuller firing his final warm-up pitch as we get set for the second. A couple of strikeouts in the first for Cade, making his first Friday start of his career. Colin Priest, Dylan Stanton, and Will Rogers coming to the plate for Michigan here in the second. Priest is their DH. He'll stand in the left-handed batter's box. Let's we'll keep track of the wind today, John, because now it's blowing in from right. Not as much over to left, but now in from right. Just a change from two minutes ago. Somebody promised me 70 degrees today. That's all I'm going to say. Who would have done that? Who possibly could have led you down that path, John? (laughs) Obermuller deals a swing and a miss by Priest. Cade starts off strong. When we looked at the weather last weekend, it said 70s. I told Hawkeye Nation, I said, hey, it'll be 70s at Banks for when Michigan comes to town. And then push back a couple days. This week's supposed to be nice, but there's strike two from Obermuller. Well, what, outside corner. What you did was a great job of, uh, of, of pre-selling the weather. And so that's, it. that's just good work. It's not, it's not your fault it changed by the time the week rolled around. One thing I don't have control of. Here's the 0-2 from Cade. Called third strike at the knees. Three strikeouts in a row. He swept that thing from the right hip of Priest and put it right on a platter in front of him, but he's too late, couldn't swing at it. Interesting, you know, Priest has started 13 games, so I mean, clearly there's some type of platoon that goes on with the DH. To start him against Cade as a left-handed hitter is a, an interesting platoon. Yeah, it's a choice, as it's we like choice. to say. It's a choice. <laughs> Here's Dylan Stanton, right-handed hitter. Cade just missed the outside corner, tried to bring it in the back door. Stanton's the first baseman for Michigan. Senior, 268 hitter. Started 15 games. This is game number 16 for him. 1-0 pitch is fouled back to the pad. Talked with Coach Heller a little bit about uh, back-to-back uh, weeks where that, that midweek game got canceled due to the weather and and how he felt that would impact the team. And you know, Last week, maybe you could say rusty, Going into going into the series with Minnesota, but Iowa started so hot on Friday, and then and then fell apart in the middle of the game. As this is drilled to left, but foul, and out of play. It's one and two. I, I guess what's your approach, John, to have that midweek canceled and you go basically five days without playing a game? Well, I, you know, obviously for for Cade, it shouldn't have any bearing. Now your hitters, you know, especially this week where they couldn't really get outside much, and so it's a lot of cage work and and things like that. Ah, one, two, hit him in the foot. On the side of the foot, you could hear that thud from all the way up here. And so Stanton gets hit by the pitch when Cade really had him on the ropes. He might be sorry he wore that one after a while, but. Really, yes. uh, But but yeah, I I think, you know, the biggest thing the last, you know, losing the two midweek games is, you know, some guys that, um, you know, a Reese Buter who's, who's, you know, 
we keep hearing things about it, how we close and you know ready to ready to be back in kind of the weekend mix. You know, just hasn't got a chance to get on the mound. Um, you know, so so guys like that. You know, even Elliot Cadula New hasn't been able to throw as much. Um, you know, to, to get some opportunities. So that's that to me is the biggest part of it, is those guys. You know, who could now be, you know, who you you're going to need at some point, and it could be. You know, what three four weeks between appearances live appearances against another team for them yeah we haven't seen recent ages will rogers is the batter one and one count starting catcher the six hitter for the wolverines got a runner at first base and one out Short lead at first base. Cade will lob it over to Guerin. Do you and home plate umpire Tim Cordell go to the same gym? He's got gun show going too there with short <laughs> sleeves and everything. Yeah, he, he left his jacket at home. Those sleeves could... I, I've seen looser sleeves out there, John. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 1-1 from Obermuller. Breaking ball high and out. Ball two. Michigan 32 of 40 when it comes to stolen bases. They are sixth in the Big Ten in that category. Two balls and a strike. Obermuller fires. Popped up. Foul over to the right. Out of play. Count even at two. Good pitch there from Cade. He was able to get the fastball inside to the right-hander. Jammed him up and created a soft foul ball. See if now he can maybe get soft contact in the middle of the infield and get two and get out of here. Yep. Obermuller taking his time. The 2-2 from Cade. Swing and a miss. Throw it right by him. High fastball. Four strikeouts for Obi. Or just heat him up at the top of the zone and not let him catch up. Two down for the Wolverines now. Runner at first base. Russo, the seven hitter, starting third baseman, stands in from the right side. Cade is ready. Here's the pitch. Outside corner, strike one. Good spot. Another guy with quite a few strikeouts, so guy Cade can attack a little bit. A one delivery. Too far outside. That's a ball. You can see Caruso pretty choked up on the bat. He's not quite all the way down to the knob of the bat. He's up about half a hand. Bottom part of the order here, 7-8-9, though, has nine extra base hits, ten extra base hits, and ten extra base hits. So you still can't just throw get-me-over stuff here. Sure. 1-1 one, one from Obermuller, swing and a miss. That high fastball has been really strong for Cade so far. And Cade's velocity's been 91, 92. It hasn't been his his crazy hard stuff, but it's it's been smooth. It's had good movement on it, even probably more importantly. Hey, there you are. Can go pretty much anywhere now. One ball, two strikes. The pitch lined into right and foul out of play. Tried the high heater there. Crusoe was able to. He was late, but was able to go get a piece of it. I think slider low and in, or is that too risky at this situation? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I haven't seen him be competitive really with the fastball, so I kind of like it again. One-two pitch, fouled off again over to the right. But I like the idea. You're right on there, John. But he's able to able to fight it off. Do you trust yourself to go kind of backdoor slider and mm -hmm. just try to catch the outside part? <laughs> Go again with a ball and two strikes. Two outs, top of the second. Obermuller's got the sign. The pitch. Cold third strike. Cade again. He's up to five strikeouts. He gets three in the inning. Just dropped a fastball on the outside. Just kept working it. Knew, knew what his plan was. Stuck to it and got the out. Bottom of the second inning coming up. Scoreless between Michigan and Iowa. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The Silly Moments. 
the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Puck fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Davis Cop, Reese Moore, and Gable Mitchell come to the plate for Iowa in the second. Four, five, and six against Dylan Vigu. Vigu put Iowa down in order in the first. A couple of changes today due to injury. Sam Peterson and Andy Nelson out. Petey was hurt. I guess this week in practice sometime. We saw Andy Nelson get hurt against Minnesota uh, last weekend and knew it probably wasn't great, but uh, hopefully see them back soon. PD's was a, uh, uh, a buildup. It, ah. so it was something that's kind of been lingering in there and just finally created enough of an issue that needed to be dealt with. Hopefully they he both heal up soon and... Get them back as soon as possible. The Hawkeyes are on the road next weekend at Ohio State. Davis Cop swings at the first pitch and drives it deep to right, but it will go foul and into the Iowa bullpen. Where can the ball get out today, John? I don't think right. <laughs> but no, I think it's it's about a you know a 180 flip from what we've normally seen, where where most days the only way you can get out is to kind of hook it around the right field foul pole. I think today, and maybe it's a hook it around the left field foul pole. 0-1 pitch to Cop, took it for a strike just below the letters. It's nothing and two. You've been doing this for a few years. I'm just in my second year, but the only wind I've known is wind <laughs> blowing in. Is that standard, or are we just in a weird pattern here in Iowa? No, that is uh, that is spring in Iowa. So that's that's all you get here, and you know in uh, the the late season, the, uh, the late season, you know May. Uh, into June, if you can play here in June, you might get a wind blow in a different direction, but. Cop strikes out. Start off the bottom of the second. Yeah, I just, I don't think we've ever had a wind with the exception of the Maryland series. We had that, those thunderstorms come in last year. I think we had the wind blowing out for a little bit on one of those days. And Matt Shaw tried to hurt people over yeah. at Carver. Didn't, yeah, and he didn't need the wind that day. No, he did not. One out for Iowa in the second. Here's Reese Moore. Connor and I were talking about that before the game. Moore slices this down the line and left, and it's foul. So we're talking about, how, I think Trackman had it at 5.04 or some silly number like that. And I said, yeah, that didn't really account for the 20 to 25 mile an hour wind that was blowing it. Right. The thing probably went 4.30 or 4.40. And again, once it bounced off the pavement, knocked on the front door of Carver. <laughs> A one to Moore, way outside. Not his best fastball. No, that. We'll say that slipped out of the hand. One of the things with the TrackMan Daddy, he's had the thing that makes the fastball hard to hit is you know, is it's had great movement too. So. One one pitch. Moore clubs it to right. It is hooking and it is off the wall. Moore around first, headed for second. Here comes the throw. Moore slides in safely with a double. Roped to right for Reese. 
98 off the bat, went 325, but that wall's 330 out there, and you know, that's the way. If you're going to get one out to right, that's the way to do it. Hit it, hit a solid line drive, but I like kind of laying down a little bit. I gotta say, John, there there are fewer things in baseball that are more beautiful than a smooth left-handed swing, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. You know, goes all the way back to you know, kind of those Will Clark days and Ken Griffey Jr. Some of those yeah. guys. Reese has got a really good-looking swing. Here's Gable Mitchell swings at the first pitch, popped it up. Into left center, no tag. And it's caught by Garcia out there for two outs. Gable missed that one. Yeah, fastball up and away, but look out here. We're going to advance. Sloppy play for Michigan. John, I'm jotting it down in my notebook. What'd you see? Uh, ball just got away. Just threw it into the pitcher and, Th and misfired? Yeah, threw it in and, and lost it, rolled to the backstop, and, you know, uh, it could be a big deal. You know, we saw the pitch. Uh, we saw the pitch. Couple pitches get to the backstop so far. Now you're you're back in the uh, back in the zone. All right. So now that uh, that puts Reese Moore at third base as Will Mulfler steps in. Iowa starting left fielder today, making his second start of the season. This is eighth game. First pitch to Will. Ooh, inside almost hit him. Yeah, Gamecast hasn't figured out how to move him to third yet. Yeah, good luck with that one. The room next door. <laughs> Big U will go from the windup with the runner at third and two outs. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Mulfler takes up and in. Ball two. Will, a veteran of this Iowa team. He's batting 385. He's five for 13 on the season. Got a couple of doubles and an RBI. Senior from Washington. Here's the 2-0. Dropped in for a strike, two and one. Be a bad way to steal, uh, steal her second RBI of the season. The two one, grounded foul into the Michigan dugout over to the left. Still haven't moved him up, which tells you they don't know who threw it. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they're not sure. I was I was putting the F8 in my book, John. So I, I'm glad you were, you were paying attention. You saw it. Two balls, two strikes. Smolfler in the box. Big U back on the mound. He's ready. Out of the wind up, the pitch to Will. Outside and low. Ball three. Ooh, Big U was halfway towards the third baseline. That pitch was way out. Ball three. Yeah, that ball's on the inside part of the left-handed batter's box. And just because Rodgers frames it up does not make it a strike. Full count, here it is. Line drive up the middle, base hit into center. RBI single for Will Mulfler, and the Hawks have the lead in the second. And that's a little bit of a freshman right there. You know, you you get, uh, you get don't get the pitch you think you wanted, and then all of a sudden you leave a breaking ball up over the middle of the plate and just let Will go with it and drive it right back up the box for the game's first run. Will Mulfler. Nice job. Gets the Hawks started in the second. Couple of hits for Iowa. It is one to nothing. Here's Michael Seegers batting eighth for Iowa today. First pitch to Michael. Took it for a strike. Mofler with a short lead. Here's a ground ball right to third. Caruso's got it. He'll make the throw across the diamond for the third out. Iowa gets on the board first, courtesy of an RBI single off the bat of Will Mulfler. 1-0 Iowa. We're back for the third right after this. This is Honkeye Baseball from Learfield. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and type our car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. 
with no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM Big Ten Radio Channel 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. John Evans and John Leo on the broadcast booth at Banks this afternoon. Top of the third, Iowa leading Michigan one to nothing. Eight, nine, and one coming to the plate for the Wolverines. Tim Brook, Dernetti, and Garcia take on Cade Obermuller. Obermuller with five strikeouts so far today. Cade will see Tim Brook, the second baseman, first. Left-handed hitter, Timbrook, the starting second baseman. 270 batter. He's got eight doubles and two home runs. First pitch from Obermuller. Squared to bunt, pulled it back. Strike one on the inside corner. That draws the corners in a bit for the Hawkeyes. Oh one pitch. Grounded foul over the left. And so right away, Cade in a strikeout position and, and can really go anywhere. Go with the fastball, can implement the slider away now. No balls, two strikes. The pitch from Cade. Called a ball just low. All right. We got to hang tough. To, I already said it, John, I know, but <laughs> Tim Cordell's pretty delayed. You were, you were anticipating that one, too. It's hard for us to tell up and down from here. Yeah. Looked really good, but it was low. Here's the one, two. This is grounded left side. Tello's going to have to hurry. Raiders got it. Throw on the run. And a good hang by Blake Garrett at first base for the out. That's where Blake's height really helps. Yeah, Blake's, uh, what, eight, eight foot, eight, six reach there, being six, six and going up and getting it is uh, pretty useful there. And a good throw on the move from Raider as he judged the big high hop well and went and flipped it over. I think that's great awareness by Raider, too. He, he knew that he wouldn't have time to grab that or wait for it to come to him and then set up and throw it. Go get it, throw it on the run. Nice execution by Tello and Garen there. One down. Here's Dernetti. First pitch is a strike to him. Low outside corner. Dernetti's the starting shortstop for Michigan, batting ninth for the Wolverines today. Sneaky good dog. Uh... Home run, couple triples. Lines it sharply foul over to the right. Nothing and two. All but two batters have a home run for Michigan in their starting lineup. Stanton does not, and Garcia does not. Everybody else does. No balls, two strikes. Obermuller's pitch. Too far outside. Tried to go with the backdoor slider and didn't start it in a good enough spot. And Garcia just has 31 at bats too, so he's he's fairly limited. As I mentioned at the top, mm -hmm. Michigan's battling some injuries too, trying to get guys, uh, hopefully get guys healthy at some point for their sake. One two, outside again. Cade's trying to snap that slider in there, but has missed a couple times in a row now. Yeah, more like what he's just done with the fastball. Just stayed in the zone and kind of worked around the edges a little bit. Two balls, two strikes. Cade comes set the pitch. Low and in, ball three. Because yeah, that's the problem when you nibble on 0-2 oh, and 1-2, then you don't execute the 2-2 two -two pitch. And now you got a coin flip. Yep, here we are. Full count all of a sudden. Obermuller's delivery. Ground ball left side. Seeger's backhand. Jump throw from the hole. Got him at first. How about that play? Seeger's the shortstop. Really good work there again. As Hawks have made two 
outstanding defensive plays. And boy, not to uh, not to downplay Raiders, but Michaels might have been even better. Is had to go into the hole and get it and then make a long off-balance throw right on the money. Again, the recognition by the Iowa infielders in this inning. Hey, we don't have time to come to a stop, step, and throw. i gotta move, got to move this ball over to first on the run. And Tello did it first. Seegers followed suit. Two down for the top of the order, Garcia. Ball one, low and out to him. I guarantee it never flashed through Michael's mind that he thought, hmm, I'm going to have plenty of time here. Right. <laughs> he knew he was going to have to rush and did a good job, made sure he fielded the ball first. Cade's starting to miss just a little bit more this inning. The other note for Seegers fielding that ball there, he was coming forward too, uh, just a touch, because it wasn't hit directly at him or, or with enough pace where he could wait for it. 2-0 is just low, ball three. Yeah, so it allowed him to round it a little bit so he could get some some momentum going to first base. He wasn't just strictly going toward the left field foul pole. Count is 3-0. and oh. Pitch from Cade. That's a cross for a strike. Outside corner, 3-1. and one. Garcia, 462 on base percentage, so... Does a really good job here at the top of the order. Yep, he'll get on for the Wolverines in the third. Five pitch walk. One nothing Iowa in the top of the third. A couple of base runners for the Wolverines this afternoon. Both have been via free base, a hit batter and a walk. Haven't hurt the Hawks yet. Here's Mitch Voigt, dangerous hitter, batting up over 300 at 333. 13 doubles and five home runs. Right-handed hitter. First pitch from Cade. Just below the knees. I sent you that text last night. I was watching the North Carolina-Virginia game, and the Virginia pitching staff, the first five walks they issued all scored. And Oh, man, yeah. Been there, seen that play. Yeah. This is hit in the air to right. Wilmus coming forward a bit. Ben has got it for the third out. Good pitch by Cade, and Voigt missed it and just lifted a lazy fly ball out to Wilmus and Wright, who made the catch for the third out. No harm from the Wolverines in the third. We'll go to the bottom half of the inning, one nothing Iowa. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Oak Knoll is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknoll.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa out in front, 1 0. We in get, the bottom of the third. We get extra time today being on TV. We get full commercial breaks. and Yes. Yeah, well, uh, press box is full up here today, isn't it, John? We got, we're, we're over in the uh, first base side of the press box, all the way up against the wall. We're usually uh, right behind home plate, but we'll move for, for Connor and Danon. We'll, we'll shift over. Hawkeye, it, Hawkeye royalty? Yes. Here's Blake Guerin. Blake swings and misses at the first pitch that he sees. 
0 1, Garen takes low and out. Garen hits it on the ground to short. Shortstop runs around it. Dernetti's got it. Throw over to first base for out number one. Kind of bobbled up his glove, but was able to make the play. I don't know if anybody else can hear the music, but I can. Yeah, it's it's somebody from outside the <laughs> just just outside the, the box. That music was driving me nuts. <laughs> you know me, John. I don't like any type of any type of thing that could throw throw our rhythm off any it's, not, it's like when uh, when one of our headsets isn't working when one of the cups is is dead like you know you were dealing with that a little bit today your your left ear was bothering you or at least your headphone that stuff like that drives me nuts you handle it better than i do though yeah you, As you can tell i'm rambling about it you now. fixed the fact that i couldn't hear anything out of my left ear it just went away oh here's wilmus swings at the second pitch that he sees hits it on the ground to second base two down for iowa in the third What do you see from uh, this Michigan pitcher, the freshman, Vigu? Uh, he's been very efficient. He's filling up the zone. I was swinging early in some cases. And so, I mean, he's just sitting at, uh, he's what, probably mid-30s for pitches. It hasn't updated here yet. But Huck swings at the first pitch that he sees. He hits it in the air to right. Right fielder moving over, and he will not be able to make the play as he slides into the wall over there. It's a foul ball. Good effort by Voigt. That's your Sunday starting pitcher flying into the wall down there. I assume they have a Saturday, I guess, the second game Saturday. He and Jacob Denner both pitched. Exceptionally well against Maryland. So, no balls in a strike for Hochstorf. Ooh, up and in. He turned away from it. That one was headed right for his left ear. Breaking ball that didn't break. Count even at one. The pitch from Vigu. Huck takes up and in ball two. Michigan's starting rotation, they've got uh, th their rotation, they've got a couple of guys that have been in and around, but haven't committed, haven't had the same three consistently throughout the season, which, ooh, that one did catch Kyle up and in, rattled his cage, and he'll take first base. He's all right, though. He jogs down to first. Uh, but, you know, honestly, Iowa wasn't sure who Michigan was going to throw until about Thursday of this week, Wednesday, Thursday. And, um, yeah, Voight and Vigu each has seven, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. And I mean that. You have five other guys that have started that have started one, two, three, four, and yeah. five games. So a little bit of everything. And I know you get midweeks in there, but. Here's Ray Dertello, fouls off the first pitch that he sees over to the right. You know, when we look at our stat sheet, John, when, when the teams, you know, their pitchers, there's usually a dotted line, you know, about three or four pitchers down, and that sort of signifies, you know, starting pitching, right? At least the way I look at it. I was, as Tello's hit by the pitch, right between the shoulder blades. Back-to-back -back hit by pitches, and now with two outs, we'll see Davis Kopp and a couple runners on. When you, when you look at Iowa's stat sheet, their pitchers, it's Obermuller, Brecht, and Morgan, and then there's the dashed line, and then it's the rest of the pitchers that that uh, the show the stats. Michigan doesn't have the dashed line. No, and because you look, uh, Voigt's really the only one, and, you know, again, Iowa's running into this trouble a little bit too, but Voigt has seven starts, 44 innings. Um, other guys just haven't been... You know, haven't been in the games long. Vigu averages four innings a start, less than four innings a start. So he's kind of reaching a number here where, um, you know, Iowa, typically he's had damage done to him by now or, or you know, getting kind of into that range. And so you kind of want to make this, uh, make this uh, uh, lack of control hurt now. He's giving you a couple free bases, easy bases. Now go punish him for it. Team's hitting 287 coming into the game against Vigu. As Cobb hits us on the ground left side. Gloved by the third baseman, he'll go the easy way to second. 
And that'll do it for the third. A couple of hit batters put some traffic on for Iowa, but nothing doing. We'll go to the fourth, one nothing Hawkeyes. Back after this, this is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Obermuller out for the fourth. Iowa leading 1-0. Cade with five strikeouts through three innings. Yeah, it was just big U's career high, season high, four and two thirds. His lowest total of walks is two, hits one, and one earned run is his best appearance. So, doing a nice job today. You heard Coach Heller talk about that. The didn't want him to didn't want him to figure it out today. All of a sudden against Iowa, but mm-hmm. other than the little hiccup there at the end of the inning, he's done a pretty nice job. Rustich, Priest, and Stanton coming up for Michigan. Obermuller deals low and in for ball one to Rustich. And and really, even the run that was allowed wasn't necessarily his fault either. It was a, you know, I guess the advancement to third wasn't his fault, but eventually the the run did score. Yeah, it might have been. You know, we we were talking about it. Was would that uh, would the single up the middle have scored Reese more from second? Obviously, it was easy from third. Yeah, two zero pitch from Obermuller lifted into right field. Wilma sprinting forward now, shielding his eyes from the sun. Ben's got it for the first out. Well, he got Rustich to chase. Thankfully, yeah, good pitch there. A two zero. Uh, Rustich went outside of the zone. Pretty good pitch on the, you know, it looks like it's, looks like it might hold the zone, but but got out just off the outer edge of the plate and Rustich couldn't really get anything on it and hit a soft fly ball to Wilmis. Here's Colin Priest, ball one to him on the outside, uh, just outside of the zone. Michigan as a team coming into the game with a 259 batting average, 12th in the Big Ten. They're 11th in slugging and 10th in on-base percentage. There's strike one from Cade. Got the most strikeouts in the Big Ten at 259. I need to see Cade get back in the zone here. He was early on, was dominated the early parts of the count. Ooh. That just up and in, I guess. Ball two. Yeah, Gamecast is stuck back on the middle of the third. Priest struck out his first time up. Here's a 2-1. Outside corner. Whoa. Ball uh, strike two, rather. Well, might have been the pitch before that should have been a strike, and that one's uh, (laughs) – We'll take it. That sweeper evens it up, I guess. That's tough for Priest. Here's the 2-2. Hit him. And then we even it up. Cade is arguing that Priest leaned into that he kinda, by bending his knee forward. Go ahead, John. He kind of did. He drops his knee down. You know, you're kind of going with the breaking ball, and we'll see. Yeah, we're going to have a chat here. Umpires will come together and discuss. Because he ducked that, he ducked that knee down. 
when you bend your knees like that, your your knees are moving forward, right? right. I mean, just naturally, that's how it, yeah, anatomy I mean, works. I mean, part of it is is you know any breaking ball that's coming at me, I'm probably going to bend my knees as well. <laughs> yeah. So not necessarily suggesting that he's he's trying to get hit by a pitch, but he's he sees it coming in and thinks, uh oh, and and doesn't really have a place to go. And we'll see how uh, we'll see how it works out as Iowa does use a does use a challenge and sends the umpires over to the the booth. It has reached a formal status. Yes, they're formal. <laughs> heading down the right field line. If you or someone you know needs support, call or text nine eight eight or chat nine eight eight lifeline dot org. That's a new one. New one added to the list. Doesn't impact your efficiency, though. You're off to a good start with the reads, John. Well, I'm not sure. Either. That one's that one's a more difficult one to work in. I don't feel like that one's one I can uh, just kind of randomly drop anywhere. We've got to find the right spot for that yeah. one. one nothing Iowa in the fourth. Three base runners for Michigan today. So far, three. Uh, rather, at this point, three. We'll see if it stands after the review. Two hit by pitches and a walk. So That is Cade's typical... Uh, typical idea in the meantime let's pause 10 seconds for station identification this is iowa hawkeye baseball all right so after the review they have awarded priest first base so that doesn't go iowa's way they'll bring up dylan stanton Runner at first with one out. Shift on for the Hawkeyes. Mitchell, Seegers, and Tello on the left side of the infield. Garen all alone at first. Has to hold the runner, Priest. Now he'll quickly come off the bag as Obermuller deals fastball high and out. You're right, John. It's been just uh, a little less accurate from Cade in this inning. Yeah, hasn't, uh, you know, threw strike one a ton first two innings had a little bit of trouble in the third and having some issues here getting strike one in the fourth inning but if you look back to Rustich it was a 2-0 count and the pitch that Rustich swung at and flied out to right with was out of the zone too so if he doesn't swing at that's ball three uh, he ends up hitting Priest and now he's fallen behind 2-0 and to Dylan Stanton and that draws pitching coach Sean McGrath out of the dugout and even with Priest I think it was 2-2 uh, but you know, one of those pitches was a very, very favorable strike two call. The, the, mm -hmm. you might argue one of the pitches before that could have been a strike, but it was borderline as well. It wasn't obviously a strike. And so, again, just needs to focus in here, find, uh, find the zone. Got the help behind him on the defensive side. We, you know, we talked about this last weekend, too, when Iowa goes into this shift, especially with a runner at first really challenges Gable Mitchell to cover if they do get that ground ball into the into the shift because it's such an awkward awkward way to get to second base. All right, mound visit has wrapped up. 2-0 pitch from Obermuller to Stanton is on its way home. Low and in ball 3. Some chatter from the Michigan dugout now. He tries to lock in. It's definitely chatter worthy now. Yep. 3 0. High and out, ball four. A couple of free bases. And some traffic now for Michigan with one out. Fair crowd here to, uh, today at Banks, especially down the right field line, but over to left, not as. Not as good. Not uh, a big group of Michigan fans that traveled hard with the 2 o'clock on a Friday. Just Stanton's fifth walk on the year. Just... Here's Will Rogers. Hits it on the ground left side. Seegers tracks it down. He'll bobble it. He did a good job there by knocking it down. The bases will be loaded for Michigan as Michael had no play. He had a long run. And that probably would have scored a run if it would have gotten through just because of how softly it was hit. Oh, for sure would have. You'd... With with Mulfleur and left, you would have seen seen him challenge him. But boy, that's that's the problem with the two free bases. Is now a two eleven guy hits a hits a hundred bouncer to to the five six hole. I thought Raider was going to be able to cut it off. He didn't think he could, so he went to cover third to try to give Michael an out. But now you're in a bind here. 
Just one out. Line drive, base hit into center. One run is in. They'll hold the runners everywhere else. We're tied at one. Yep, John, you're right on. The, the free bases hurt the Hawks. And then Caruso ties the game with a sharply hit single to center. I mean, in Stanton, you walked a guy that's walked four times all year. And Rogers is a guy that hits 211 and and has a seeing eye infield single. And we've seen this happen now. You've got to just bear down and limit the damage. Mm -hmm. One out, bases loaded. Squaring to bunt is Timbrook. And he missed it. Now a throw down to third. Got him at third base. And that's how you limit the damage is by blowing a squeeze play. Great play there from Reese Moore to jump up. Greater Tello on the bag and stuck with it, too. A good slide back into third to try to avoid the tag. Tello stuck with it, put him on. Still not all the way out of the woods yet, but boy, does that help. Huge play. What a throw by Reese Moore. Great tag by Tello. Two down, runners at first and second. Here's the 0-1 from Obermuller. Outside. Boy, that's a big play. Jot that one down, Hawkeye fans. Keep that one in mind. We're in the fourth, tied at one. Count even at one with two outs. Lefty on lefty matchup. The pitch from Cade outside, ball two. Boy, you got a pitcher not throwing strikes, and you you bunt with the bases loaded, so your guy's stuck. He's got to go. <laughs> and... Boy, that, uh, then he bunts through a, a really good pitch. Mm -hmm. 2-1 pitch. Ooh, inside ball three. And, you know, Tim Brook, you know, he, he's batting 270 coming into the game. So he's not a poor hitter, but must be a contact guy that they trusted, but he, he didn't execute. Now Cade needs to execute on the mound. Here's the 3-1. Fouled off over to the left. Full count. I mean, this is where I'm. I missed my stat cast because, boy, Cade's pitch count's really kind of gone through the roof here in the third and fourth innings. Yep. Time called. Reset things. What do you like here? Fastball? Yeah, I think it's the only thing he's consistently thrown for strikes. All right, 3-2. Runners will be going with two outs. The pitch, low and out, ball four. That pitch was close, but no room for error when you, when you fall behind to a three-ball count. So now the bases are reloaded for Michigan in the fourth with two outs. Bottom of the order. Dernetti comes up, right-handed hitter. Obermuller deals. Fouled back to the screen. Two walks, two singles. The first two hits of the game for Michigan have come uh, in this inning. Tied at one in the fourth. No balls and a strike. Obermuller comes set, the pitch, swing and a miss, nothing in two. Boy, there was something in his in his head going off of don't swing at this, but uh, <laughs> couldn't uh, couldn't stop himself on a good breaking ball down and in. Huge pitch coming. No balls, two strikes, the pitch outside. Couldn't bring it in through the back door. One ball, two strikes. That's where you want to see Cade. Just settle in a little bit. You can see the frustration. That pitch slipped out of his hand a little bit. Show that maturity that he's been developing here and just go get him. One, two. Hit high in the air to left, foul and out of play. That's a good breaking pitch from Kate. I mean, he hits it hard, but that's the only thing he's ever going to do with that ball is mm -hmm. take it on the inside part of the plate and just jerk it into the practice football field another one two high and out ball two boy the fans really wanted it but it was it was too far outside count even at two yeah, not even particularly close but 
be something to change the eyesight of Dornetti. Here comes the 2-2 from Cade. Swing and a miss. He got him. Blew it right by him. Went right back to the fastball again. I like the sequence there and got out of a jam. And, boy, a little help from Michigan minimized the damage. Yep. Tied at one. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Iowa Bats need to get going. Only two hits so far off the freshman from Michigan. We're back to the bottom of the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Pitcher's duel at Banks as we get to the bottom of the fourth. One to one between Michigan and Iowa. Each team with two hits. Hawkeye bats, Reese Moore, Gable Mitchell, and Will Mofler come to the plate in the fourth. Need to uh, need to string some good at bats together. Although Vigu hit a couple of Iowa batters in the third, his his pitch counts in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, he's just at 43 pitches and 60 percent strikes. Cade was running up in the mid 60s, but again, having a little bit of trouble. 73 pitches through four innings and 56 percent strikes. So, kind of to that point, you really need to see Cade get back in the strike zone, uh, and Iowa needs to. Needs to maybe get Vigu off the edges and see if they can do some damage when he comes more onto the white part of the plate. Have you noticed anything with Iowa's hitters or just trying to feel out Vigu to this point? I think just trying to feel them out. They've made some good swings, and there's been a couple good contacts that just haven't worked out. So you just keep, keep doing the right thing. Here's Reese Moore, who blasted a double off the right field wall in the second. He'll lead off the Iowa fourth. First pitch is low and out for ball one. Maybe do you think uh, take a few pitches? Are we to that point against Vigu? Or I wouldn't mind seeing it. You know, there's just been, uh, you know, unless it's exactly what you're looking for, which I know isn't always the easiest thing to determine. But there's strike one at the knees to Reese. Some of the first pitch has been solid contact, but a lot of it too has been kind of you know either softer fly balls or, or weaker ground balls. The wind up in the pitch to Moore. Outside. Ooh, called a strike. One and two. Okay, so there's something about that edge that uh, that he blinks and misses that part because there's a there's just a weird, a weird outside part that he calls there. And it was a breaking ball. Reese lays off that one and wisely so. Two and two. So that really that pitch came in the back door, really. Should because have. It, was, it was a bit of a breaking ball. It had had some snap to it. And maybe just kept framing it in and looked good to the umpire. Mm. Reese moves a little closer to the plate. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball right side. Sharply hit to the second baseman. Good good play by Tim Brook as he fields it and throws it to first out number one. Yeah, I mean, that's 104 off the bat, but unfortunately he just beat it right into the ground. And so good fastball at the bottom of the zone. I'd like to see Gable show some patience here. Yeah, third baseman Caruso in front of the bag, so maybe thinking about Mitchell bunting. He takes strike one on the outside corner. Mitchell bats from the left side. He flied out to center back in the second. Here's the 0-1. 
Line drive into center, and it is caught on the run by Garcia, who is sprinting towards left. Another ball 100 miles an hour off the bat. Just unfortunately didn't have enough slice on it to get away. That brings up Will Mulfler. Base is empty and two down. Mulfler with an RBI single. Gave I with a lead in the second inning. We're tied in the fourth. One to one. 1-0 one -oh pitch to Mulfler. Outside ball two. I mean, just sitting at 50 pitches, so be a assume a, a career high for Vigu. I don't I don't envision them taking him out. No, they're not. His, his world's going to have to get rocked a little bit different to to not set a career high for innings. That's for sure. 3-0 is outside to Mulfler, so a four pitch walk with two outs brings up Michael Seeger's career high four and four and a third, four and two thirds, something like that. Yeah, he did this last inning though too, where he gets the first two guys out and then he. Hit two guys and then got a soft ground ball. So might uh, might have some of the same issues that that some of the IO pitchers are working through. Of look pretty good, look pretty good, battle a little bit with your with your own demons, and then come back and get another out. That'll bring up Michael Seegers, the shortstop, with two outs. Runner at first is Mulfler. Michael takes inside for ball one. Closer than the strike on Reese. Whoa. So he likes outside to lefties. He yeah, doesn't like the inside of the righty. Got it. One ball, no strikes. Are really defending the lines against Seegers. He takes inside again, ball two. Vigu kind of freezes and says, Are you sure? Called it a ball inside. Let me see if Mike can, Michael could uh, just rip one right down the. Airborne enough to get it over the Caruso's head. And That's the key at third. We'll have time calling the catcher will walk out and talk with the pitcher. He's really close to the line at third, and the left fielder's way off the line. So, like you're saying, John, up over the head of the third baseman if you had to pick your spot. And we've seen some teams play it this way where, yeah, particularly if you've got your outfield pinching to the middle, you go ahead and, and let your let your – infielders first and third baseman play on the line because uh, you don't want a bouncer down into that corner where your guy's never going to get there because obviously that uh, especially with two outs that runner's going to score from first all the time so at least this way you protect a little bit a lot of room in right center for michael as well the 2-0 is low and in ball three and so Vigu has missed on seven in a row now blake garen on deck for the hawkeyes This is a serious red light here. And there is strike one, low outside corner, three and one. Will's trying to figure out, what are you trying to pick me off at first for? Yeah, back pick by the catcher. That's interesting in this situation. Three balls and a strike with two outs. Vigu deals to Seegers. Michael took it again for a strike, three and two. I'm hoping double red light. I don't, you don't see Michael take that pitch too often. Now the count's full, so Mulfler should be going with two outs. The pitch, there he goes. Michael hits it on the ground, right side. And it's gloved by the second baseman. He'll throw it to first for the third out of the inning. Runner gets on for Iowa, but stranded. We're through four at Banks, one-to-one -one between Michigan and Iowa. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance, because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. 
American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Top of the fifth inning in Iowa City, John Evans and John Leo bringing you Iowa Hawkeye baseball this afternoon. The Hawkeyes tied with Michigan at one. We'll see Kate Obermuller for the fifth, and he'll take on uh, the top of the Wolverine order, Garcia, Voigt, and Rustich. It's been a good game so far. Clean baseball being played in the field. A couple of free bases by both pitchers, and uh, for the most part, though, they've stifled the uh, opposing batters, each team with just two hits so far. Cade through four innings has allowed one earned run. He's walked three, struck out six, though. He's done a nice job. The pitch count is getting a little bit concerning at 73. So we'll see if Cade makes it through the fifth. Obermuller with uh, with one, one, two, three inning. That was the first. Then he faced four batters in the second and the third, and then a little bit of a shaky fourth. So we'll see what the fifth looks like for Cade. Mows. Mows him down. Yeah, let's let's go right off the rip with the with the top of the order. He's 0 for 1. This is Garcia. Lined out to Mitchell to start the game. He walked his last time up though in the third. Lefty on lefty matchup. Over Mueller. He is ready to get us started in the fifth. Line drive into left. Mulfler sprinting forward. Will's got it for one pitch, one out. Good start, John Evans. Well done there. Not an easy play for Will. as one of his first uh, outfield catches in a while. Nice job there to judge that properly. Sometimes you see uh, an outfielder sprinting in. You're worried about that first step in, and they get burned over the head, but Will had a, had a beat on it. One out. Here's Mitch Voigt. Voigt's 0 for 2 today. He takes low, ball one. Our friends from the Big Ten Network, Connor Onion, Dane and Hughes in the booth with us, passed along a stat to us uh, about the starting pitching uh, this weekend, especially on, on Fridays as Obermuller missed inside for ball two. Kate Obermuller and Dylan Vigu, two of four underclassmen Friday aces. The others, uh, Josh Jerwa at Michigan State, and then Ohio State's got one, too. We'll probably see him next weekend. Beidel Shees. So some young arm talent on the Friday Friday openers featured today. Two of the four in the Big Ten here at Banks today. And they are impressing. Obermuller looks good. Big U looks good. Obermuller stays alive in the count. Deals a strike three and one. We don't see Michigan State uh, in the regular season, so we won't see Jerwa, but likely see Beidel She's next week in Columbus. Three balls and a strike. Obermuller deals. It's scooped foul straight back. And Cade has worked. The count full. Feels like we saw Jerwa last year, right? We did see Jerwa here. Yep, he was a freshman. So uh, a couple of... I think, three, it's, I think it's three sophomores. Got to remember Beidel Sheets from last year. 3-2 is a fastball outside. Cade couldn't come all the way back. And so he walks Voigt. That's where Voigt's dangerous, right? And, you know, look at his – well, I guess it's Rustich that leads the team in, in walks. But Voigt has uh, just 12 on the season. 12 walks but 30 strikeouts. So now Voigt's at first base. Here's Rustich, tie game, one to one in the fifth. Cade deals up and in, ball one. Jack Young probably relatively loose at this point if, if need be, but love to see Cade throw that low fastball, see if he can get a double play here. Goes with the off speed that catches the outside corner there to even the count at one. 
Iowa's defense has a slight shift. Gable Mitchell playing near the bag at second. Tello hugging the line at third. Seeger's normal spot at short. Slider out again, two and one. Yeah, you noted it in the last inning, John. Cade <laughs> visibly frustrated when he when he doesn't hit his spot. Yeah, he's just kind of kind of got that extra hop off the mound energy. You know, one of the things where he's been when he's been calm, whether it's good or bad. So lately, the the slider has been missing outside the right-handers, and the fastball's been low and in. And he's fallen behind again. This time to Rustich, it's three and one. And Rustich is one you can't make the mistake with the fastball over the plate. You can spin something up there, but you can't make the fastball miss over. Try and move over to first, just a lob to keep Voigt around and, and restart Cade's clock. You know, this will be pitch 85 for Cade. So again, you just the efficiency from the, the Iowa starting staff has been the, the, the trouble. Mm-hmm. Here's a 3-1. High pop-up. Shallow center. Huxdorf comes forward. Mitchell and Seegers come together. Mitchell dives to his knees and makes the play in shallow center. That thing was up in the stratosphere. That, that launch angle was 60 degrees, so pretty much straight up in the air. Uh, but, boy, just tough to battle the sun and the, and the little bit of breeze that there was. And, Finally, uh, Seegers decided I better go cover second just in case this goes bad. That was as high as a Tory Taylor punt and then some. <laughs> Two outs for Colin Priest. Ooh, called a ball. Looked good, but high and in. Gable should have called a fair catch. Yeah. <laughs> Short lead at first. Here's the 1-0. In the dirt and off of Reese's shoulder, Voigt will get to second. Oh, what a great read from Voigt, too, as he went right away, saw that ball was going to bounce, and, and then made his decision that uh, he was going. And, and if Reese picks it up clean, maybe, but boy, once it bounced anywhere away from him, Voigt was on the move and gone. Reese will head out and talk with Cade. We're tied at one in the fifth. Two outs, runner at second base. Count is two and oh. Cade's near the end of the line. Well, I think it's just a matter of whether it's with three outs in this inning or uh, slightly less. During or after, right? <laughs> yeah, he's going to be pushing, pushing 90 pitches. And again, I think to me the more... The more concerning piece of it is the, the strike percentage just continues to get closer and closer to 50-50. Two balls, no strikes. Outside for ball three. Dylan Stanton awaits on deck. Assume the red light for Priest. Cool. If not, holy cow. Yep. 3-0 from Obermuller. Called strike. Low outside corner, it's three and one. Again, other than a couple select guys, this isn't a team that walks an excessive amount. So 3-1 is in on the hands for ball four. I would bet we see Jack Young. Dylan Stanton walking to the box. He's a right-handed hitter. We'll see if Coach Heller pokes out of the Iowa dugout. Two outs. There's Coach. That'll do it for Cade. Mm. Just could not get through the fifth. It's tough because you're just really begging for the Iowa starters to get, get through five. I feel like that's been the theme of some of our broadcasts the past few weeks. Well, and Cade had been there the last two weeks, you know, 91, 92 pitches to get through five innings. Uh, you know, four and a third the week before, five and two thirds at Jacksonville. But, you know, this is kind of that, uh, I guess you'd call it sweet spot for Cade, four to four to five and two thirds. You kind of know what you're going to get. But unfortunately, you, you want that little bit extra. All right, the Hawkeyes will make a pitching change in the fifth. Two outs, two on for Michigan. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game, family. Friends, 
We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Okay, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Name the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Top of the fifth inning, Michigan and Iowa tied at one. The Hawkeyes make a pitching change with two outs, two runners on for the Wolverines. Iowa turning to the right-handed senior from LeClaire, Iowa, Jack Young. 2-0 on the season with an 084 ERA and 13 appearances. Also has a save, 10 and two-thirds innings, six hits, two runs, just one earned, three walks, and 14 strikeouts. Opponents hitting Jack at a 162 batting average. Comes in with a little bit of traffic on the base paths, but not not foreign territory for Young. No, that's pretty uh, pretty normal for this time of year or this season for Jack, as he's kind of become the uh, uh, the, the the Friday fire putter outer. Yes, Friday firefighter. Jack throwing his warm up pitches. He'll see Dylan Stanton. He's got two plate appearances, but not an official at bat. Hit by a pitch and walked today. So I was not been able to get him out. Two down in the fifth. Runners at first and second. Tied at one with the Wolverines. The teams have jumped on Jack's first pitch in a couple of his recent outings. So... Knows he's going to be around the strike zone. They've kind of taken advantage of that a little bit. So, Minor technology issue. Jack's wristband doesn't appear to be working, and so Coach McGrath will sprint out of the dugout and make the change. Hand technology, the, John. Hand it to the home plate umpire so he can't sneak any words of wisdom in there beforehand. <laughs> not charged with a visit on that one. But yeah, the, the point was just that you know Jack is so good at throwing strikes, teams have kind of recognized that first pitch strike and, and started to swing at it a little bit, and he's given up a hit on some of those first pitch, first batter, and then he settles in. But mm -hmm. when you come in to put out fires, that first hit could be a big deal. Right. Young deals, missed just outside. Good pitch. Almost to take advantage of that tendency because, boy, he was ready to go. Held up on the swing, though. Boy, that was close. Stanton got his hands started but didn't commit. 1-0 pitch from Young. Here it is. Fouled off over to the right. A little bit different look. <laughs> you <think>? Understatement. <laughs> you go Jack, kind of side... I don't know if I, I don't like calling it sidearm, but the delivery. It's a the, low slot. Yeah, the, the release point's lower. 1-1 one, one from Jack. Fouled off again over to the right. 1-2. and two. And then you mix in the, the change in speed. Yeah, if I'm Jack right now, I think I heat him up. I think I'd throw, the, I'd throw 89 on the inside part of the plate. Okay. And probably send him right back to the dugout. One ball, two strikes. Young comes set the pitch outside. Went with it, but missed in the outer part of the, the plate. Yeah, they went a, a different direction. I guess that's the scouting reports, all the damage of it. he does on fastballs on the inside, so trying to stay away from him with the fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Young is ready. The pitch, mm, outside again. Ball three. Guided that one. You could see him try to throw a dart. Yeah, that'll put the uh, put the base runners in motion. Bring your best here, Jack. Full count. 
The wine and the fire fouled back. Send everybody back to their bases. Get the umpire some new baseballs. Do it again. Another full count pitch from Young to Stanton. Base hit in the right. Wilmus comes up with it. And he will throw it to third as Michigan takes the lead on a sharp line drive to right. Interesting. I don't think Wilmus saw that ball either because he really kind of froze, maybe even broke the wrong direction. I, I don't know that he would have had any play with the runners already moving anyway, but uh, you know, then had to go back and get it, and so changed his changed his approach to throw to third. But good piece of hitting there. Just went the opposite way with the fastball, hit it hard through the hole that Iowa gave him. Two to one, Michigan in the fifth. Hmm. Free base is hurt. Here's Will Rogers. Singled his last time up. Runners at the corners for the Wolverines and two down. Young deals. Ground ball. Weakly hit to Mitchell at second. He brings it in, throws it over to first base for the third out. Michigan takes the lead. It's two to one. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Garen, Wilmus, and Huxdorf try to get this one tied up. We're back after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. All right. Well, Michigan has the 2-1 to one lead in the bottom of the fifth. Iowa looking to answer. Hawkeyes had the lead, one to nothing, until the fourth. Michigan tied it up. They've scored singular runs in each of the last two innings to take the lead. Big U comes back out. The Hawks will be... Seen him for the third time through, with the exception of Garen. This will be the second time that Blake has seen him. But then it'll go to the top of the order, and we'll go with Wilmus and Huxdorf after that. Blake is 0 for 1 today with a bounce out to short. I see some patience here again. I think he was sitting just at 60 pitches through four innings. So, you know, very efficient, been in the zone, kind of pounding it around there. And then when he, his troubles only come with two outs. So he's really done a nice job of <laughs> limiting when he gets himself in trouble. Yeah, you feel if those, uh, if those walks come in at a different time, if they come in to lead off the inning, boy, then Iowa can sway the momentum. But, yeah, he's... Falling behind Garen, two balls, no strikes. Wind blowing in from right over to left right now. Two balls, no strikes to Blake. Here's the pitch. Took it up, ball three. Whoa. Blake's a tall guy. That uh, felt like a strike. Yeah. Assume the red light here for Garen. Here's the 3-0 out of the windup. In there for a strike, three and one. Three balls and a strike. The pitch to Blake. Popped it up foul over to the left. Chase that one, John, you think? Swung at ball four, yes. Mm. Up and in. Full count now. 
Sure, it looked enticing, but it's not a pitch he's going to be able to do anything productive with. Big U back on the rubber. Here's the 3 2. Low. Ball four. Blake with the leadoff walk. And he'll get on. That's the first time that the Hawkeyes have had the leadoff hitter get on base today. Well, like I said, it just feels like all the trouble and traffic have come with either one or two outs. And so, good way to try to break that momentum and break that habits to get the leadoff guy on with a well battled four walk. Here's Ben Wilmus. On base percentage, just a touch below 420. He takes strike one. Interestingly enough, Michigan hasn't put the leadoff guy on base yet. Struggle for both teams. Nobody out. Garin at first. 0-1 pitch to Wilmus. Took it again. Nothing in two. That's a tough pitch for Ben because that's a ground ball written all over it low in the zone like that, and it's double play city for the most part. But now he can't afford to keep the bat on the shoulder. Here comes the 0-2. Line drive, fair ball into the left field corner. Come on, Blake. He's around second, headed for third. What do they do with him? They'll put him right on the bag. It's a double with two strikes for Benny Wilmus. Boy, what a mistake there again. You saw that mistake earlier with... Mulfleur, where he hung, hung a breaking ball when he had a chance to get the out. Same thing there. Left that breaking ball right in the middle of the plate. Wilmus makes no mistake with it. Just barely keeps it fair. Rips it down the line. Hawks have a chance to answer here right back. Down 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fifth. Runners at second and third. Nobody out for Kyle Huxdorf. Meat of the order coming up for the Hawkeyes now. Corners come in for Michigan. Huck is 0 for 1 today, was hit by a pitch. First one he sees is low and out, ball one. Close. Good eye there from Kyle. A lot of room down the lines for Kyle. Here's the 1-0 pitch, grounder to short. Here comes Garen. they'll throw it to first to get Kyle. We're tied at two. That's a good... Good job from Blake Guerin there as the ball's slowly hit up the middle of the field. Shortstop was playing back. Guerin immediately went. And so you turn you turn a weekly hit ball at least into a tie game now. So Iowa immediately has the answer and still have the, the go-ahead run close enough. You think at any point Dornetti thought to throw it home? He shouldn't have. I mean, he was playing deep. They were conceding the run. That was the whole point. Here's Tello with the runner at second, one out. Ball one, backhand stab by Rogers. We've seen what happens when you when you have a plan and you decide or think about deviating from it. You 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 knew what you wanted. You wanted that out. Go take it. Yep. Two balls, two strikes, or rather, it's two to two as Tello pops this up left side. Left fielder sprinting over towards the line. He'll make the play for the second out. I was plate discipline a little shaky right now. I think Raider probably sees a better pitch later in the at bat than that one. Yeah, I mean that's an inside fastball. You know, you saw what Ben Wilmus did, took a pitch that he didn't particularly like, but it was a strike. Got a better pitch than later on when uh, Big U made a mistake. I think Raider might have uh, might have bailed him out for making those mistakes, and that's you know, we hear Coach Sutherland talk about it all the time, you know, getting the pitchers off the edges. Cop hits it on the ground to short. Dernetti comes up, throws it to first base for the out. The Hawkeyes tie it up. We're through five. It's two to two. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. 
How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. As a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. With the game tied at two, headed here to the top of the sixth inning, Iowa turns to Aaron Savory. Sav's eight appearances on the season. He's 2-0 with a 3.07 ERA, 14 and two-thirds innings, 12 hits, five runs have all been earned, six walks, and 17 strikeouts. His opponent's hitting Savage just a 214 batting average, so he will factor in the decision at the or could factor in the decision at this point. So we will see uh, Savory. We're thinking maybe Jack comes back out, but uh, instead the Hawks turn to, to Aaron in the sixth. Well, I think what you do, you, you know. You hope, you expect Sav to give you multiple innings, which yep. will mean he's not going to be able to throw tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You expect Jack Young then to be able to, you know, throwing just two thirds of an inning, you expect him to be able to come in and, and help you out tomorrow, and actually just a third of an inning. So you, you expect him to be able to come back in tomorrow and be able to get some outs for you tomorrow if you need him in a uh, in a firefighting spot. Yeah, very different relief pitchers, right? Sav would be your your mid to long reliever and Jack is your closer type. Depends on the scenario. Obviously pitched today and not in a closer situation, but needed him. Well, it's a closing situation and the game could be over if you don't if you don't do it correctly and, and well. Yep. Sav sees 7-8-9, Caruso, Timbrook, and Dernetti. 1-0 pitch from Aaron on the way. That's at the knees for a sharp strike. 1-1. One and, one. and Sav's the guy that, you know, the fastball's going to get up there, low 90s, but really throws those good frisbees up there, too. A lot of movement, a lot of break on those. Nice pitch from Sav, but called a ball outside. Just a touch, it's 2-1. Russo tied the game in the fourth with a base hit. Here's the 2 1. Fastball out. 3 and 1. So Iowa got the leadoff hitter on in the fifth and ended up tying the game. Michigan with a 3 1. Takes strike 2 3 and 2. They're seeking their leadoff hitter. Getting on base for the first time today. Count is full. Yeah, it's been a uh, been an interesting game. There's been plenty of free bases given around. They just haven't been to the first guy very often. Savory with a punch out on the outside corner. It took a second. <laughs> Woo! I think I think he knew right away. We didn't know because he didn't throw the bat back. He was turned around to walk back to the dugout. But I yeah. wonder if there's a ver there's got to be something verbal down there, right? That yeah. we can't hear. <laughs> yeah, I think he's getting punched out right away, and then we're getting the visual punch. Out, you know, because what is it? Uh, we we can't hear the sound, but the. Uh, the Sight travels faster. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's some science there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making stuff up now. Uh, here's <laughs> here's Tim Brook, the eight hitter, left-handed batter. Pops it up, left side. Molfler comes together with Seeger. Seeger's going back. Get out of there, Michael. Here's Will, who's got it for out number two in shallow left. If that's Petey, I don't think Seegers goes anywhere near it. But with Will, you just make sure make sure the new guy knows what's going on. Yep. Make sure you yep. can see it. It's just a new communication style. Yep. Two down for Kyle Dernetti. 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Savory on the rubber and ready. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him chase out of the zone. 
Hawkeyes will have more Mitchell and Muffler. Woo! Say that three times fast. Sounds like more runs. <laughs> there you go. Oh one from Sav. Outside. Ball one. Yeah, you, you mentioned just a few moments ago that this has been a strange game, an odd. It, it's felt a little bit odd. Uh, certainly for the past few Fridays, right? And this game's 2-2 two to two in the sixth. 1-1 one, one is hit foul over the left side. We've had some really high-scoring Friday games that have been... Well, we've certainly given up a lot of runs on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, we should if, say if you, it that way. If you want to be uh, painfully accurate about it, we've given up a lot of Friday runs and uh, haven't scored quite as many. 1-2 from Sav, way out, ball two. Probably got enough last weekend that uh, last Friday that should have won a game. Didn't did, didn't Oof. get that many in in West Lafayette the week before. Mm-hmm. Here's the two two. Grounded foul again to the left side. Yeah, this feels more of what a Friday game should be like, right? Lower Low. scoring. Yeah, mostly. I mean, you're still. You've got four free bases on the Michigan side with with a couple hit batters and a couple walks. You had, you know, seven from Cade. There's another strikeout for Savory. Dropped in a breaking ball and gives the finger pistol. Two strikeouts for Sav in the sixth. All right, Hawks will look to break the ties. We get to the bottom half of the inning. Two to two, Michigan and Iowa. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Brown Deer Golf Club offers a pure golf experience. Manicured bent grass fairways with tees and greens carved into gracefully rolling landscape. Challenging, yet extremely playable. Improve your game with PGA instruction and our full-service pro shop. Treat yourself to Bunker's Bar and Grill for lunch or dinner. And our scenic Greenview Banquet Room is perfect for weddings or any special event. Brown Deer Golf Club, a stunning country club setting at affordable public rates. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. John Evans and John Leo in Iowa City at Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon. Bottom of the sixth. Two to two between Michigan and Iowa in the opener. We'll play a doubleheader tomorrow beginning at 1 o'clock Central Time. Uh, Sunday's weather is miserable rain forecasted and really want to get these games in against conference opponents so shifted things over to a, a double header tomorrow should be a, a decent day at the ballpark 58 is the high i believe ah 55 tomorrow tomorrow better be warmer than this or you and i are gonna have words for promising me that 70 yes i am not i am not warm right now i've got a few layers on but uh 55 and sunny. I don't think much of a win, but Sunday's just disastrous, and so we're not even going to play. We'll just play a doubleheader tomorrow. Yeah, 88% chance of rain and thunderstorms on Sunday. And mm-hmm. Michigan had a flight to catch, so there wasn't a lot of... If they were on a bus, you know, maybe you could wait it out and you could see what happened, but with uh, with a, a prescribed flight time, you really lost... You had a small window to get it in. Yeah. No balls and two strikes to Reese Moore. He takes low and out. Vigue's back out there for the Wolverines. He's thrown five innings, given up three hits, an earned run. Two walks and a strikeout. We're tied at two. Each team with three hits today. The right-hander deals the one-two outside. How to find a way to, to get through to him. Well, and, and you're seeing at least a little bit more disciplined at bat here. You know, the last, the last three Hawkeye hitters have all swung at one of the first two pitches. Mm. Two, two, outside again, ball three. So Morris fought all the way back to get a full count. 
Boy, what would a leadoff walk here do for momentum after falling behind 0-2? See if Reese can find his way on. Here's the pitch to Reese. Inside, low, ball four. You know, boy, we've seen that. We've seen that from Iowa pitching this season. You get ahead and you, you nibble once or twice and then you can't execute and get a mound visit. We'll see if that's just a visit. Is again career high four and two thirds innings. So we're at a we're at a bigger bigger normal, bigger inning than normal. John, that door's opening up down the line and left. We'll have a new Michigan pitcher uh, coming into the game, it appears as they have taken the ball from Dylan Vigu. That'll do it for the freshman. Pretty good outing for him. He'll walk off to the dugout to the left. We'll see a new Michigan pitcher coming into the game in just a moment. We'll take a pitching change break. Gable Mitchell will be the batter for the Hawkeyes, the runner at first, and nobody out. Tied at two. Back after this pitching change break, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Does your company attire make you feel like you're always fourth and long? It's time for a change. Hand the ball off to Authentic Brand and watch your team transform into MVPs. On game days, our team dresses like champions in Authentic Brand. Ensure that your company's reputation remains untarnished by using nothing but the label specifically designed to display your company's identity. Ask your supplier for Authentic Brand products and see for yourself why it's more than just a label. It's a statement. Tickets are on sale now for the High Beam Indy Car Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini. Five in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at highbeamindycarweekend.com. Bottom of the sixth inning, tied at two with the Michigan Wolverines, and a new pitcher into the game for Michigan. They'll go with a right-handed sophomore, Kurt Barr. He's 3-1 and one on the year with 11 appearances, also has three starts, 3.68 ERA, 36 and two-thirds innings, 25 hits, 17 runs, just 15 earned, 17 walks, 28 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at just 192. Mm. Has given up 12 extra base hits, though, eight doubles and four home runs. He's one of... Uh, Michigan lineup has a ton of, or Michigan roster has a ton of two-way guys. He is one of those. Fastball is going to get up there right around 90. Throws a big loopy curveball and a slider as well. So again, one of those things, hold the strike zone. Make him, make him come in the zone. Moore at first base. Here's Mitchell. Takes downstairs for ball one. Gable goes from the left side. Mitchell with a pair of flyouts to center today. He's put the ball in play. Here's the 1-0. Ground ball right side through into right field. Moore is at second base. He'll slam on the brakes right there. It's a single for Gable Mitchell. Found its way through for a base hit. Seeing eye single there. Bouncer finds a hole. Now they'll see. You know, maybe, maybe. You trust the senior to bunt here. You let Will take a swing at it. Force the Wolverines to, to get that out. It's Molfler coming to the plate. We've got time called again, and this will be Tracy Smith. This will be the head coach of Michigan coming out and talking with his, with his team. The infield will meet on the mound. Yeah, John, what do you think? I, I will counter with associate head coach Marty Sutherland along with Rick Heller. Uh, the head coach coming out and talking with his group, pulling the base runners off. And Mofler, what what do you think the Hawks elect to do here if you put your coach's cap on? I think you see a bunt. And part of the reason is thanks to uh, uh, my friend Connor sitting next to us here, the Michigan SID. Michigan is second in the nation in double plays with 33. So, you know, you've got a rally here. Um, you've got a guy that handles the bat. Well, I mean, I know he's not hes not a regular or a guy you think of all the time, but, you know, a guy that can certainly get a bunt down. And so you, you trust him to do the right thing here and, and 
you saw a little extra chat there as as they're parting. Mm-hmm. Um, and with Seegers on deck, a veteran hitter who can put the ball in play to get basically to get the runner to third with less than two outs. That's the key with with Seegers on deck. Right, I mean, because we're we're pushing into late game here. I yeah. mean, the bottom of the sixth inning, you're, you're just you know you're at a spot now where you you, you want to pay this off and. Yeah. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Mulfler comes to the plate. We'll see what the Hawks elect to do. First pitch. Breaking ball low. Wow. Big looping curveball like you talked about, John. It it looked like it found the bottom of the zone, but dropped too low. The catcher kind of bounced it up, and I I think the frame might have hurt him there in that situation. Yeah, might have because it looked like it was bottom of the zone. Bar comes set, 1-0 to Mulfler. He's not squaring to bunt. Oh. Ooh, he takes a strike called low outside corner. <laughs> I mean, we're where we should be with a 1-1 count, but we, we just got there on opposite pitches. Yep. Nothing on the bunt yet. Mulfler checked his wristband. Now he looks into the dugout. I don't know if there's any confusion here. The 1-1 to Will. Runners take off. Ground ball to third foul. Mm. So the hit and run. Maybe, uh, maybe. Or you think it was a straight steal? Maybe a mix up of the signs, John? Well, uh, yeah. The, the interesting part of it, I mean, you kind of mentioned, and we're seeing Coach Sutherland come out to talk to Seegers too. That I'm not sure. Reese Moore to steal third isn't your normal, yeah. your normal move there. Now Barr is slow to the plate, so if you got a good jump, you felt like you had the breaking ball. Bunt is totally off now. The one-two, Mulfler rips it into center. This could be deep enough to tag Moore from second to third. There's the catch. Moore sprinting to third base. He'll tag and get there. Runners at the corners with one out for Seegers. So in a way, you get the job done. You move at least that lead runner to third. You got half of it done, and now you could kind of play a game if you wanted to with with Mitchell at first. You know, good speed, good action there. Obviously, Seegers handles the bat well, so you've got you kind of bring hit and run into play again. I do like that idea to get Mitchell moving. So here's Seegers. Michael's batting 255 on the season, but he puts the ball in play. Don't let that fool you. Third baseman in front of the bag. First pitch, Michael squared to bunt, pulled it back, pitch way outside. Moore has to scramble back to third base. Boy, and if Michigan would have been alert, that was exactly the same play that Iowa threw the runner out at third. Moore was a long ways down the line. Now Caruso had kind of chased in with him, so didn't really have a target to throw to. Yep. 1-0. Pitch is low. Mitchell takes off for a second. Throw down is late and offline. And so it took a couple extra pitches, but Iowa gets the two in scoring position with less than two outs. Yeah, Iowa got the sacrifice in the strangest way imaginable, and that'll bring the Michigan infield in. Bottom of the six, we're tied at two. Michigan brings the infield in. Runners at second and third for Seegers. One out, two balls, no strikes. Bars checking his wristband. And, ooh, okay, they're going to intentionally walk Seegers to get to Guerin. You set up the double play. You give yourself an option here. It was 2-0 already. Ben Wilmus came out of the dugout, though, as he's the on-deck hitter now, and he made sure Blake Guerin knew that, uh, hey, buddy, they just walked a, they just walked the guy to get to you. Even though there might have been a little more nuance to it than that. <laughs> you don't need to tell Blake that part of it. You just tell him, hey, they, they, don't, they think they can get you out, bud, yeah. so go get them. John's mentioned it a couple times. Michigan, very good at turning double plays. A lot of room on the right side of the infield. They've got Blake shifted over to the left. Base is loaded, one out. Garen takes strike one. Curveball outside corner. Now he needs to watch the double up here. I don't know if he's going to want to swing at it, but he's going to need to watch that he starts it at that height and drops it down even lower and gets him to chase. Here's the 0 1. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Oh, right to the second baseman. It'll be a double play. They had the shift on. Garen hit it right to second base where the second baseman was playing. He fielded it, stepped on the bag, and threw to first. Chased the curveball. Yep. Oh, man. Iowa leaves them all on the base paths. We'll go to the seventh, tied at two. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Honda Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. Honda, the brand named Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand for 2023. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Civic or HRV. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer today. Honda gets the Midwest. See dealer for financing details exclusive against I and Type R car and driver January 2023 based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Top of the seventh, tied at two with the Michigan Wolverines. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, well, the Hawkeyes hit into an inning-ending double play with the bases loaded. To get us through six, man, it's pretty deflating. Now we back it up with Savory to the mound. Top of the order for Michigan. Aaron was outstanding in the sixth. A couple of strikeouts, and he put Michigan down one, two, three. Yeah, we've really got a three-inning game here now because you've got top of the order for Michigan. Top of the order will come up for Iowa in the bottom of the seventh inning. So I mean, we could have saved ourselves, what, two hours and just started here. <laughs> right. Two to two, top of the seventh. Savory out of the windup. First pitch is off the glove of a diving Garen at first base and into right field. That'll be a single for Garcia. And doesn't feel like a ton, but Michigan has the momentum. Get out of that double play, get out of that bases loaded with a double play, and then you get your leadoff hitter on. First time today for the Wolverines that they've done that. Well, that's, a, that's a big deal right there, and that's a ball that and Garen gets a glove on but can't come up with. And now Voigt steps in. Savory deals a strike, breaking ball, nothing and one. I sense that Blake was playing pretty far off the line there for a, a lefty hitter. I don't know if Iowa had a shift on or yeah, what did, there. Didn't think he was going to pull it. And Oh, one pitch from Savory. Swing and a miss. That thing was dirty. Woo -hoo -hoo. Nothing in two. Again, Garcia, three or four stolen bases. You know, if he can guess on a, you know, one of the 75 mile an hour breaking balls, it's a pretty good pitch to run on, too. No balls, two strikes. Savory comes set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got Voigt. Frisbee one, Frisbee two, Frisbee three. Just went tripled up with it, huh, John? Well, if, if it works, you keep doing it. And Moit didn't look like he saw those at all. And big spot here now with Rustich. Yeah, dangerous hitter for the Wolverines. He stands in. Rustich is 0 for 3 today with a strikeout. Runner at first and one out for Michigan in the seventh. We're tied at two. Fastball low and in from Aaron. Ball one. I like the pitch there. You got a guy that's... Might be thinking he can dive out over the plate because you've been, he, he just saw three Frisbees and he threw to his buddy, so. Runner takes off, swing and a miss, throw down to second base. Got him! How about that toss? Reese Moore and the tag. Gable, Money Mitchell, two down. Wow, Iowa has not been great at throwing base runners out. Just the, uh, boy, just the third base runner they've thrown out this year. It's a great job from Reese on a 77 mile an hour breaking ball. So, really stuck with the, stuck with the throw. Big momentum swing there for the Hawks. Two down, base is empty now. Count is two and one. To Rustich, Savory out of the windup, the pitch, strike two at the knees. 
busted him with the fastball right down low. Aaron's hit with his fastball and his off speed. We'll see what he goes with here. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Lined into left. Mulfler coming forward. Will dropped it. He's headed for second. Here comes the throw. And it's offline. Mm, 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 mm. We talked about that earlier. Line drive kind of right at you. Rustich is uncomfortable. But you charge in, and, and ball had kind of that top spin hook and just kind of just kept moving on him. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to come up with it clean. And Savary will need to get another out. See a left handed hitter. This is Colin Priest, the DH. He's reached twice today, was hit by a pitch. He also walked, does have a strikeout today. Runner at second and two outs. Savory from the stretch. Here's the pitch. High ball one. Mm. And this is where Sav needs to just be comfortable, settle down. You didn't do anything wrong. Just take a deep breath, go back and throw the same darts you've been throwing. Trying to get back even with the count. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch from Savory. That dropped in there for a strike, one and one. Top of the order comes to the plate for Iowa in the bottom of the seventh when we get there. Hopefully still tied. It's two to two. Savory comes set, long pause. Here's the one, one. Fouled off, over to the left, one and two. Like the spinner, or you like the speed here, John? I think here you can probably, you could probably low and away fastball here. All right, one ball, two strikes. Savory's got the sign that he likes. Aaron deals low, ball two. All right, just overthrew that fastball a little bit. Huge spot in the game. Inning continues after an error by the Hawkeyes. Trying to get out of it now. Unharmed. Two balls. Two strikes. Savory ready. Fires. Swing and a miss. Aaron got him. Boy, what a bounce back there. Good maturity from Aaron to come back, not let the, not let the error phase him. And get the Hawks out of the inning. We'll head to the stretch. Tied hey, at two. Hey, Hawk fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all, Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. And this is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Bottom of the seventh in Iowa City, Michigan two, Iowa two. Top of the order coming to the plate for the Hawkeyes. The black and gold will send Ben Wilmis, Kyle Huxdorf, and Raider Tello into the box. And they're facing off against Kurt Barr, who's out for his second inning of work. I'm starting to shake. I'm not. I'm. I, I can't feel the tips of my fingers, John. <laughs> the sun's out. It looks. It looks fine out there, but ugh, cold. Cold today. 
It's a sneaky. It's a sneaky 60 or 53 degrees, if you ask me. Yeah, I'm not buying what your watch is trying to sell me there. <laughs> All right, Ben Wilmus to lead it off. He doubled in the fifth. Strike one from Barr. Iowa scored in the second. Michigan tied it in the fourth, took the lead in the fifth. And the Hawkeyes tied it up in the fifth. We've been knotted up since then. Wilmus takes ball one, low and out. Yeah, just some single sticks, both teams with four hits. Plenty of free bases spread around, though, as Michigan's left eight on base, Iowa's left seven. Wilmus grounds it off his foot in the box. Ouch. Oh, maybe a little higher up than the foot. Ouch. <laughs> Nor north of the knee, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Michigan defending Wilmus by playing tight on the lines, first and third baseman. Hard for Ben to get it to the corner unless he elevates it. He did it last time. That's right. Bar out of the windup, the one two, popped it up. Straight up, the catcher with his lid on will make the play for out number one. Here's Kyle Huckstorf. That was uh, the broke Iowa streak of two leadoff guys in a row that have gotten on base. Let's see if Huck can find a gap. Iowa has two extra base hits today. Huck takes a strike on the outside corner, nothing in one. A little bit of a shift on for Michigan. They've got their corners even with their respective bags. Middle infield playing back into the pull side just a touch. Outside from bar there, count even at one. Left center field room there for Kyle. Line drive one right at uh, right at the Iowa there on the left, left field, left center field wall. Right. 1-1 one, one pitch. Huck shoots it into right. Ooh, it's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is caught as the right fielder Voigt slipped down to his backside and made the catch from his rear. Two down. Boy, that was 104 off the bat. I, I was kind of thought it was a soft fly ball off the bat. Ball kept carrying, and boy... If Voigt falls down, well, Voigt did fall down. If the ball gets away from him with Huckstore speed, oh, look out. But what a, uh, what a, what ends up being what a play. Here's Raider Tello. He takes strike one at the knees, breaking ball. Man. Oh, one to Tello. Outside and low. That's a pretty good defensive plays today on both sides. Really has been. It's uh, you know you've got a you've got two errors, but uh, you know, the the Michigan error led to the first Hawkeye run fairly directly, but otherwise, you know, an important double play they needed that play there. Iowa had a couple of good ground ball pickups early in the game. Two and one for Tello. Low outside corner, two and two. And it looked for a while after the initial off the bat there from Kyle, because I was right there with you. It looked like it was a soft fly ball to right. I thought it had a shot. Looked pretty good. Two, two. Off the end of the bat, Raider hits it foul in the air over to the right. Well, it did have a chance. It got all the way to the warning track there with. Uh, or Voigt made the uh, seated catch. Mm. Nice job from him to stay with it because as you're starting to crash. <laughs> no bail from him. 2-2. Two -two. Raider takes out. Ball three. Davis Kopp awaits on deck. Tillow's got three home runs, 13 extra base hits. Now would be a good time to Add to some tally there. Sure would be. Here's the full count pitch. Grounded to third. 
Caruso's got it. Long throw across the diamond to get Raider at first base. Iowa goes down one, two, three. We'll go to the eighth right after this. Tied at two. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Top of the eighth inning, tied at two. Aaron Savory out for another inning of work. He'll face five, six, and seven. Stanton, Rogers, and Caruso. Hawkeye women's hoops plans for tonight? Uh, just going to hang out and watch at home, John. Yeah, no, I, I'm not going to do the I'm not going to do the watch party at, at Carver. Uh, I'm sure that'll be packed over there. I know it was funny because you know, they, they talked about being on the one side and I thought y- you might be full. <laughs> you might need both sides. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm with you. I, I'm surprised that it's only limited to one side. Maybe they'll they may change their tune once people start arriving. <laughs> yeah. UConn Huskies tonight. Hmm. That's uh, that's women's basketball royalty right there. Right. Savory throws a fastball just low to Dylan Stanton to start his at bat. That's one of the perks. First of all, this game being at 2 o'clock, watch that game. 1-0 is swung on and missed, count even at 1. And if the women win tonight... Uh, we don't have plans on Sunday anymore, John. Right, we are we're now free on Sunday for a uh, potential national championship game because I remember last year getting in my car. I think at halftime mm-hmm. uh, of the of the Iowa LSU game. So um, if we're, we're going to get that far, then it'd be more fun to watch the whole thing. Yeah, or track it as you choose to. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't watch very often. Savory's ready with the one-two. Grounded to third. Raiders got it. He'll spin. He'll make the long throw to Garen, out number one. What are your plans tonight, John? Um, my wife will have the game on TV. I will be sitting there with my headphones in, listening to music, occasionally watching TV and tracking it on Twitter. That's your superstitious? That's your preferred method? Which one is it? Just preferred or superstitious? Uh, just will keep me in the uh, the calmest place. I love it. Can, could you imagine? Well, I mean, you probably did, but swing and a miss there. A guy my age can't watch a 31 to 26 quarter again. With I can't keep that up for four quarters like they can, so I have to pace myself a little bit more. <laughs> of course, I already kind of knew that those answers, John. I just wanted to have you put it out there. Savory with a beautiful off speed that is just outside to Will Roger Rogers. It's one and one. That game against LSU was pretty good. At the end of the first quarter wasn't great. It caused some worry, but 1-1 hit on the ground. Ooh, Seegers backhand stop. Long throw to first. Got him again. Seegers a la Derek Jeter. Two down. What a throw from the deep hole there as Iowa returns, returns the favor on... It wasn't going to be an inside-the-park home run, but still an outstanding play. Outstanding defensive plays on both sides. Blow for blow, and Iowa counters with one of their own. Michael Seegers, his second 
gem of the afternoon. Two down, bases empty for Caruso. Squared to bunt just just to show it and strike one from Savory. Boy, that was 104 off the bat. So not a, you talked the first time about how he had time to kind of circle it and get his feet set to throw it. Did not have that time there. Savory's 0-1 is up and in, one and one. You, you just watched Michael, he just kind of glided over to it and I don't think there was any worry in our mind that he, he wasn't at least gonna get there and, and get it. Now the throw, no, it was about 50-50, but it was right where it needed to be with the right amount of pace to get the out. Well, and some of these, some of the athletes I was watching, uh, I was watching one of your other sports. I was watching the, the video that they cut on some of the, the track athletes in the lead up to that, and those fast track people just glide. They don't even really look like they're running. And Michael, as he's in his short space there, he he doesn't look like there's a lot of effort going on, but man, he covers a ton of ground to get to those spots. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Savory back on the rubber. Out of the windup, here's the pitch from Aaron. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Sav. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth, still tied up, two to two. Hawks will come to the plate with Cop, Moore, Mitchell. Back after this, this is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oak Knoll is conveniently located near the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. Bottom of the eighth inning this Friday afternoon, Iowa and Michigan tied at two. Davis Kopp will lead things off for the black and gold. Kurt Barr still out there for Michigan. This will be his third inning. Hit one into the wrestling building, get three outs and call it a day. Let's go home. <laughs> Davis has the pop and the power. He is 0 for 3 today. Davis with five home runs, two doubles. He is batting 326. Expect Cop to catch, you would think, tomorrow. DH today. Barr is on the mound and ready. The right hander deals. Breaking ball, high. And Barr's a guy that could go a while if you don't get to him. He threw 104 pitches, what, three weeks ago against San Diego, 92 against Penn State. 1-0 delivery. Cop lines it into right. Voigt goes back a couple steps, and he's got it for out number one. Boy, I always hit some balls hard, just yep. right at guys. Not finding the gaps today. No, and Barr's been really efficient. Two and a third innings now, just 23 pitches. So Here's Reese Moore. First pitch to Reese. Curveball for a strike. Good pitch, low outside corner. Each team with two runs, four hits, and an error. If you look in the scoreboard out and left. Quick wind up. 
There's strike two to Reese. Another curveball. Nothing in two. room in right center for Reese. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Three curveballs in a row, and Moore is out number two. The first two were outstanding. The third one was a chase pitch, and unfortunately... Not getting to the habit of that this late. Catcher broke his wrist trying to frame that one. Wow. Curveball, that one <laughs> is out, a strike. Is outside also. Mm -hmm. It's a breaking ball coming in from that direction. How can that be across the plate? Mitchell in trouble now. Nothing in two. Pitch from Barr. Grounded foul. Down the line. Right. We can't have... Gable swinging at that fastball that's way outside like that. Well, it's, no, there's nothing he can do with it. He, he, it's a it's a weak ground ball to the second baseman playing in shallow right field there. I suppose if he tries to poke it to, to left, he might get away with something. 0-2. Mitchell grounds it. Foul again to right. First baseman. Michigan has 8-9-1 coming to the plate. Get to the ninth. Tied at two. And that ball's a foot low, but Gable feels like he has to swing at it right now. Yep. Bar's ready. Right hander out of the wind up the pitch. Hit in the air to center. Garcia goes back, and he'll make the play for the third out. Iowa goes down quietly. We're through eight. Tied at two. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Today's game is brought to you in part by Brown Deer Golf Club in Coralville, featuring Bunkers Bar and Grill. Enjoy a great Bunkers menu with burgers, chicken, salads and wraps, and gimme's pizza and wings. A new pop-up menu at Bunkers that's all about Aaron Savory pizzas <laughs> and mouth-watering wings. To-go orders are welcome, as are you and your family at Brown Deer Golf Club. All right, welcome to the ninth inning at Banks. Tied at two in the series opener with Michigan. We'll wrap up the series tomorrow with the doubleheader beginning at one. Boy, get off on the right foot today and, and really have a shot to go win the series first thing tomorrow. That's the key right here. We're tied at two as we get to the ninth. Savory out for another inning. Eight, nine, and one. Tim Brook, Dernetti, Garcia. Well, especially where we are now in the game because whichever team wins this game is going to you know, this isn't the oh, I won it, I won it ten to one, and it was anticlimactic for four innings. It was I scored in my last at bat, and in Michigan's case, then either held you scoreless, or in Iowa's case, I walked you off. Yep. And so either way, um, going to be a uh, going to be one really fired up squad to be one and zero. All right, Tim Brook to start things off in the ninth. Each team with two runs, four hits, and an error. Savory out of the windup. Deals. Ground ball, right side, fair. Into the right field corner. Wilmus over there to cut it off. It'll be a leadoff double.
And that's the, Slow roller, not hit that hard. Yeah, that's the eight hitter that just bounced one down the line. And you, you, that's where you see a little bit of a difference in approach. We've talked about how Michigan's really protecting the corners on bouncing balls. Iowa off the line a little bit, and that ball gets past Garen. And we'll see now if got to bring the bunt into play here, I would think. This is Dernetti. Try a pickoff move to second base. Tim Brook dives back in. Dernetti is 0 for 3 today, so along the same lines with you, John, I'm thinking the bunt's coming. So is Iowa. Well, that's as much of you, you, you do the pickoff move to second to see if, if Dernetti gives you any sort of tell. If he, if he shortens up, he didn't give any indication, but wouldn't surprise me at all. Savory's ready for the first pitch. Dernetti squares to bunt, pulled it back. The pitch floated high. I'll say it didn't look like he pulled it back, but first base umpire said he did. It was a decent pitch, too, from Savory, but too high. It's actually a pretty good pitch to bunt. It's up in the air. You can kind of see it the whole time. Because you, you, you start with your bat high, so you're already kind of up at that level, but just decided he didn't want to do it. Squares early now. And he popped it up, but hit it foul. Nobody could get there. Reese couldn't locate it. Reese wasn't going to get there anyway. Nobody on that one was. As it got right, to the, got right in front of the screen, but... One of those you'd like to you'd like to catch a break and have that be up to someone, but one and one. That ball wasn't much lower than the first ball that he let go. Right. Now I understand why he didn't bunt the first one. <laughs> Savory comes set corners in for Iowa. Early square from Dernetti. Runner at second, nobody out. 1-1 one, one is bunted, foul left side, and the count's 1-2. and two. So now you want Sav, trust Sav to go ahead and do what he's done well here, get the swing and miss. Big pitch. Actually, we're going to have Michigan call a timeout here and bring... Dernetti over to have a quick chat. Is there any world where the bunt stays on for them, you think? Depends on how well you trust him. Yeah, I mean, that could you, be what this conversation's about, maybe. Yeah, if you don't if you don't think he can hit, then yeah, I mean if if he's 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 likely to see a breaking ball. So if you don't think he can hit a breaking ball, and then maybe you ask him, can you bunt this frisbee coming in? I mean, it, it, it comes in slow, but it's got a ton. You know, that one had 19 inches of movement on it, you know. But you just say, hey, look, I just need it back at the pitcher. I don't need I don't need a cute bunt. I just need it. Yeah. I just need it fair. And that's where you, that's where all of the work you put in, you find out he only has one sacrifice bunt, so it's not like he's been exceptionally great at it this year so I would expect him to swing but mm -hmm. he turns and squares but see if he pulls it back here Savory ready with the 1-2 he pulled it back fouled back to the screen you were right on John he did square pulled it back swung at it ripped it foul and Iowa hasn't he squared early three times and Iowa hasn't committed or over committed early on any of them and so they held position and waited we'll do it again at 1-2 and two. Top of the ninth, runner at second, nobody out. Early square again. The pitch from Savory. Ooh, just outside. That's three inches closer than the strike on Moore. Yep. Ooh. It's outside, but it's a pitch that we've called a strike semi-regularly today. Mm -mm -mm. Good fastball there from Sav. Yep. Loved it. Two balls, two strikes. Showing the bunt again. Aaron delivers, and he bunted it right back to Savory. Aaron picks it up. He'll step and throw to first, get the out. Man, two-strike execution of the bunt. They get the runner to third with one out. Well, like I said, he didn't have to be precise. All he had to do was get it in the middle of the field. 
And boy, that's where that the the one two pitch or the two two pitch there was huge to to not get the call on the outside part of the plate. And we will see Ben Dete come in to face the left-hander. Yep, pitching change for the Hawkeyes. Runner at third with one out. Top of the order coming to the plate for Michigan. We are tied at two in the top of the ninth. Pitching change coming for the Hawks. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Let's be honest. We all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's Authentic Brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the Authentic Brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at Authentic-Brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for Authentic Brand. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Top of the ninth, Michigan 2, Iowa 2. The Wolverines have a runner at third base with one out. The Hawkeyes go to the bullpen, bring in redshirt senior, the left-hander from Clive. This is Ben Dete. 1-0 on the season with a save in seven appearances, a 368 ERA, seven and a third innings, five hits, three runs are all earned, two walks, 13 strikeouts, of which Iowa could certainly use one of those now. Opponents hitting 192 against Ben. Just one out, a leadoff double by Tim Brook. He stands at third base now after a sacrifice bunt by Dernetti. And so we're late, we're getting really late in the ninth, and the go-ahead run for Michigan is at third. Top of the order, A.J. Garcia. He's got a single today. Dete nods his head. He's ready to roll. Yeah, Garcia was 0 for 1 against Cade. So, again, just drawing the comparison with the left-hander. Mm -hmm. And actually, he led off the fifth against Cade as well. So he's oh, he was 0 for 2 against the left-hander. Infield comes in for Iowa. Dete, first pitch is called a ball. Up and in. Well, it's not often you get squeezed tighter as the home team. One ball, no strikes. Dete comes set. The pitch in the dirt. Ball two. Good block there from Moore. Be careful now. Two balls, no strikes. Dete deals. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Just challenged him. Garcia nods his head. Just barely missed it. Sure, go with that. Yeah. I'm sure that's what he's telling himself. Yeah. Two on. Wave that miss. Two and two. Just barely missed that one, too. Change up. This is the time for it, isn't it, John? Yeah, I think now you're... You, you break him off here a little bit. And That's today's specialty. Ben will ice himself a bit by <laughs> re-tucking in his jersey. Two balls, two strikes. For a skinny guy, Ben has the hardest time keeping his jersey tucked in. <laughs> One out, go-ahead runner at third. Detay comes set, the pitch in the dirt. Good block by Moore, full count. Went right back to the heater again. Change up, John. Change up, change up, change up. Do it. Do it. I think I'd have rather seen it on that pitch than the 3-2 pitch, but you can spin him right in the ground if you do it here. This is lined into right. Wilmus coming forward. Ben got it. The runner will not be able to tag from third. Good job, Detay and Wilmus. Went the fastball high. Garcia did a nice job getting up to it. But Wilmus had him played perfectly, charges in and gets it. 
Two down. Not done yet. Here's Mitch Voigt. Stick with Detay. They don't have anybody warm and ready to go, so the correct answer is yes. All right. <laughs> Runner at third. Tie game in the ninth, two to two. Detay comes set. First pitch. Swing and a miss. And you know, Void is a guy. Mentioned it before. There's a lot of strikeouts there. The 0 1. Fouled off over to the right. Nothing in two. It's been all fastball from Detay. Hasn't thrown the change up yet. I like what he's doing, though. He's getting ahead, making a challenge. Now locate. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Detay ready, the pitch. Ground ball, left side, Seegers, he's got it. He'll throw to first base, got him at first. How about that? Boy, what a, what a job from Ben Detay. Comes in in a mess. Michigan, just like Iowa a couple innings ago, leaves that tying run at third, or well, leaves the go-ahead run at third with less than two out. Iowa with a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth. It'll be Mulfler, Seegers, and Guerin coming to the plate for Iowa. We're back after this. Tied at two. Bottom of the ninth coming up. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% .9 reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. One run will win it for the Hawks. We get to the bottom of the ninth. Tied at two. Will Mulfler will lead things off. Kurt Barr returns to the mound for Michigan. This feels like a Friday game, doesn't it, John? Line drive home run right over the Tiger Hawk there in left. All right, all right. You're going right for it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's... He, he felt bad earlier. He dropped the ball. He's the replacement guy. It's the spot to come in. and, and I love it. I love it, John. I love where you're at. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just writing the storybook is all I'm trying to do here. And, you know, a guy that's battled through injuries, you know, had, uh, you know, had a hard time staying on the field. How about now? How about now? Deserves a highlight. Deserves a career highlight. It's Mulfler, Seegers, and Garen. If we go with John's story, we won't see Seegers or Garen. First pitch to Will. Oh, called a strike. You have got to be kidding oh, me. Oh, man. Curveball that was way outside. Unbelievable right now. This strike zone has gotten so out of whack. 0-1 to Mulfler. That's in the dirt. Hold on. Yep, called a ball. Okay, one and one. <laughs> we usually don't. Oh, uh, get that deep, but John, you're, I'm, you're right on. I, I think we got the green light. That pitch was way outside to Muffler. Why? Man. And in a 2-2 game, man, you, you're talking all the time about, you know, you, we're going to watch a basketball game tonight that uh, that we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, officials don't want to impact the game. Yeah. And, boy, we're getting it here now again. I, I would be terrible at calling balls and strikes, so... <laughs> 2-1, Mulfler hits it on the ground, base hit into right. The winning run is on first base. Pinch runner will come in for Will now. You can count on that. Yep, Ben Swales out of the dugout. Time called by Marty Sutherland. Here comes Swales. He'll jog the first base. The speedy sophomore from across the interstate. The Tiffin, Iowa native. He'll be the winning run at first base. And, Here's Michael Seegers. And you're very likely to see Michael Seegers try to lay down a bunt here. 
And I wouldn't be completely against seeing a little game here. If they decide to charge or do something funny, you know, have Michael pull back and slash. Seegers in the box, Swales at first base. Michael squares to bunt. First pitch. Michael bunted at first base side, foul. Second, uh, third baseman, rather, Caruso crashing hard. I mean, he's right there. Yeah, and Michael doesn't care about him because he's trying to push it to the first base side. So he's not really worried about Caruso coming in hard because he's going the other way. Michael showing the bunt early. The 0-1. Low and out. Swales takes off for second. Pitches in the dirt. Throw down. Not in time. Swales got there. Oh, what a risk by the sophomore. Boy, that was a that was a bad read from Swales as he kind of got caught out in no man's land. Decided to go ahead and go, which was the right play then. Once you're stuck, go. Does the bunt stay on, John? I think so. Okay, all right. I, I mean, this was exactly the same idea we saw from Michigan. You go ahead and you move him up now, but now the direction changes. So if Caruso comes flying in, he could end up wearing one. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Seegers. Line drive, foul to right. Swinging away, John. I mean, he's just being the cam bus. <laughs> Which is, I, you know, I'm not against that either. Now you're going to have, you're, you're going to get three guys. You'll have three guys to try to get a single for you. Mm -hmm. And if you know if Michael can move him up, great. You know, bounce it to the right side here is a is a successful at bat as well. Huge hole over there. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Michael. Ground ball to the second baseman. That'll move the runner to third. Michael's thrown out at first base, but Sieg's does a job, and the winning run is 90 feet away. That's a successful at bat. That's that's the sacrifice, and that's you know it's going to cost Michael batting average points, but that's great team baseball right there. And Ben Wilmus was again chirping at Blake Guerin to say, "Buddy, forget what happened last time. This is about you right now." And the Hawks will use a timeout, bring Ben Swales in. Just that stoic presence of Coach Heller coming out of the dugout. He's got his hands on his hips. He's talking with the guys near the on-deck circle over the right. Marty Sutherland's out there as well. Coach Heller talking directly to Ben Swales, who's the winning run at third base. We're tied at two in the bottom of the ninth with one out. The batter will be Blake Guerin. And interesting that Michigan isn't using any sort of conference here. They're saving their conference. They all stayed away from the pitcher. So no, no conference or timeout. A lot of times you've seen when the other team uses a timeout, Iowa will pull their guys in. Does not happen for Michigan. And Blake Guerin. Again, we always say, how fitting is this now? So you've got you've got Ben Swales, who's pinch running for Mulfluer, who's mm -hmm. filling in for Petey. Yep. Who's yep. now and chance for Blake Guerin, who's filling in for Andy Nelson. Yes. Chance to win the game here in the bottom of the ninth. First pitch to Blake. Ground ball to short. Ooh, here comes Swales. Play at the plate. He is out. Out at the plate. I just we're gonna challenge it. Here just, comes Coach Heller. Oh man! I just hate the swinging at the first pitch yep. again. He chased the chased the breaking ball outside. That's the same. It's the same pitch he grounded into the double play on. It was a good slide from Ben Swales to try to get away from it. See Blake Guerin kind of dropped the bat in his way. I think he's gonna be out. He made a heck of an effort to get around it, but I didn't. You know, you can't tell if he exactly got him. Oh, yeah, he exactly got him. Oh, man. Garen grounds out. And there's two outs now for Wilmus at the top of the order. Yeah, again, I'm just, I'm... Oh, I can't believe, yeah. More more disappointed with the way the... the Iowa swung at just a ton of first pitches that haven't been in the strike zone. You know, one of the things the Iowa hitters hang their hat on is that that discipline, that knowing where the strike zone is. And it's just inopportune times really expanded the strike zone. Is that ball, you know, I mean, it's going to be called a strike more than likely based on where the strike zone is, but Fine. it's just not a pitch to swing at. The one thing you, you can't have in that is a ground ball to the left side. Well, you can have a sack fly. You could live to see another day. Anything. And, and 
And the Hawks have hit into some bad luck today. Double play with the bases loaded, a ground out with the winning run cut down at the plate, things like that. And we're still tied, and now with two outs, a runner at first base. But neither one of those balls were hit hard. I, I'd say the bad luck has come from a couple of the hard hit balls that have just been at guys. Those were, and unfortunately, both of those were Blake, and they're just they're poor swing decisions, really. I mean, it, it's take the pitch, you know, live to see another pitch because you know, there's just there's no win in that one. <sighs> still with the review here which has taken a long time and i'm pretty surprised by it if we're being honest well yeah the the picture that uh that, that connor the michigan sid showed me was was pretty pretty clear, clear. It, it looked like it but you never know i mean it, it yeah interesting i see there is there is something weird about how a catcher can block the plate now Oh, boy, wouldn't that be something? I haven't even really considered that, John. And so that's, uh, you know, that's certainly a possibility. If he doesn't give the lane, he can't block the plate. Here we go. Here's the call. Out at home. Which makes sense. I mean, that, I, I think it was a, uh, it was certainly a grasping at straws action. Kellen Strohmeyer now will pinch run for, for Blake Guerin, which, boy, will really... Change around the Hawkeye defense. Yes. All right, here's Ben Wilmus. Two outs. Strohmeyer at first. Uh, ben, 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 go Wil ahead, John. Well, Ben Wilmus double down the line would probably score, Kellen. Right. You, know, you got Huck on deck. Ben doesn't need to win the game for the Hawks here with the bats behind him. Just keep the inning going. Two to two, bottom nine. Look how deep Rustich is. First pitch to Wilmus, he takes it for a called strike. Just baffled by this strike zone. Outer part of the zone. Mm. Outer part of the Michigan zone. Barr will step off. Reset his clock. Strohmeyer with a good lead at first base, extending it a bit. There he goes. Here's the 0-1. It's low and out. Throw down to second base. Late. Strohmeyer in scoring position now for Ben Wilmus. Another chance for the Hawks to win this one. How good is that from Kellen Strohmeyer? Yeah, you had the uh, you had the review period to warm up. <laughs> yeah. To and, yes. And, totally cold before that. And gets on, gets on, takes the second pitch, goes and. And now Rustich has to come in in left field because now all of a sudden a single causes a problem. Center fielder came in too. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Wilmus. Call the strike. That ball is high and outside. Good oh, grief. Oh, my goodness. One and two. Wow. One ball, two strikes, and two outs. Winning run at second. Will Malfleur rolled one through the right side after a funky call on him. Here's the 1-2. High and out. Ball two. And you just saw first baseman. That was Stanton. He was guarding the line, but with second baseman up the middle, he popped off probably three steps to try to shrink that hole over there a little bit. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Wilmus. Way out. Ball three. Ooh, Strohmeyer's caught in between second and third. He'll go back to second base. Whoa there, Kellen. Whoa. When Stanton didn't, or, uh, he didn't pick up the ball cleanly behind the plate. And so don't blame him for kind of wondering, but the problem is it was sitting right at Rogers' feet. Yeah. Strohmeyer couldn't see it. Anyway, on, Ben. Full count. Three balls, two strikes with two outs. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Did he go? No. Ball four. Ooh. Okay. So Hawks, Hawks might have caught a break there. Wow. wow. I, uh, Didn't look good from up here, John. Whoa. Man, I give up on check swing things because I have no idea. That certainly looked like he went around to me, but I also think he he had a strike called on him earlier that wasn't a strike. So Here's Kyle Huckstorf with two outs. Winning run at second base. Huck today is 0 for 3. Barr steps on the rubber, looks in. He's got the sign. First pitch to Kyle. 
Hit in the air to left, carrying well. Rustich is going back, still going back. He made the over-the-head catch right in front of the wall. He spun two 360s there to try to make that catch. Boy, the outfield, the Michigan outfielders are, uh, we'll call it acrobatic. Mm. We'll go to the 10th, tied at two. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging... Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So, make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! We'll go to the 10th inning, tied at 2. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Really good part of the order coming up for Michigan. Rustich will lead it off. A lot of power here. And then Priest and Stanton to follow. Some changes for Iowa defensively. Merrick Matthews is in the game at first. And out in left is uh, Kellen Strohmeyer. And so they're in opposite spots of the batting order, though. Uh, Matthews is in Mulfleur's spot. Strohmeyer is in Guerin's spot. Dete fires a first pitch strike to Steven Rustich. I expect to be here for a while, so that might matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a one from Dete, skipped it to the plate. Iowa had really had two chances to win it in the ninth. So did Michigan. Mm-hmm. Been just a tight game. Who wants to win it? <laughs> Here's the 1-1 one, one from Dete. This is ripped. Foul, thankfully, down the line and left. Oof. Two runs and five hits for both teams. Each defense has committed an error. The 1-2 pitch from Dete. Fouled back. Good cut by Rustich. Challenged him with a high fastball. Out of the windup, the left-hander's ready. The one-two floated high. Two and two now. I don't know what to trust here. I'd like to see the breaking ball down low, but... Two-two. Just high and out, ball three. He's going to lost both of those last two breaking balls well up, not even really. Maybe he's, he's easily been able to take both of them. He could really take advantage of this new strike zone, the 3-2. Fouled off over to the right. We haven't seen that new strike zone called for Iowa, though. That's been the problem. Yeah. Big pitch. A lot of momentum hanging in the balance right now. Full count pitch from Dete. High ball four. Ah, lead off walk. It's a killer when you get to extras. It's bad any other time, too. Ben can't I keep feel his... like he quick pitched there. He just so quickly decided to. Ben works fast mostly, so not terribly unusual for him. So now it looks like maybe a. Waiting for Priest to come out of the dugout, but I don't know that he will. 
Oh, looks, looks like, like we're going to get a change. Still taking the time, though. In Still waiting for somebody to come out of the dugout to come hit. I'm not sure what's going on here, John. You got to get somebody up here. Be. Let's go. Are we going with the clock here? Like, let's go. All right. Here comes somebody from Michigan. Let's see what number. They'll send a, a lefty. That's an interesting decision, too. Yeah. They'll bring in Cooper Mullins, a oh, freshman well. from Eugene, Oregon. My guess is Cooper Mullins is a great bunter. Yep. It must be that. And so you're making a strategic decision to bunt here because he struck out four times in seven at bats. So that's not exactly what you're looking for. He's squaring early. Tello jogs in from third. First pitch is bunted right to Raider. Raider stands up, throws to second base. Got him over to first. The throw's way wide. That's all right, though. Runner stays at first base. They get the lead runner at second. Great play from Raider Tello again. Hawkeye defense coming to. We're going to get a talk about whether this is interference or not. What do you think, John? Interference where? At first base? No, at second oh, base. Second. Okay. Because, again, with the way the rules have changed, you're not allowed to roll the guy anymore. It used to be, hey, I can go blow him away. And, and so it's either that or, or where maybe the ball hit. But yeah, you can't you can't blow guys up at second anymore, Ooh, and so there's a little contact there, isn't there, John? We'll have a formal review. Not really. No. Michael kind of jumps out of the way. Michael avoids the contact, so I don't think we're going to get anything on this one. But they are taking a look at it down the right field line. What a big time play by Raider Tello. He got right close to the box, and so that bunt took one hop and right into his glove. He made the heads-up play to throw it to second. I, do you think the Hawks had a chance to turn two if it was a good throw from Michael? I, I don't know oh, if he would have got it at for first. For sure. You think yeah, so? absolutely. Had him, mm. had him at first base with a good throw. But, Oof. again, Michael, Michael, instead of... You know, instead of kind of staying on the base and taking it, which, again, if he takes it, he gets the out, because I think then they go ahead and say, yes, you blew him up. But Michael kind of jumps toward third base. Oh, you are right. That throw, would if the throw's good, it would have been all right. Yeah, good throw gets him. I think the only other question is, you know, where did the ball maybe rattle around there in, in uh, uh you know, down just past the first base dugout, but I, I don't think they're going to call him out. I'd be, I'd be really surprised here. Here come the umpires. Yeah, just and, one yep. out. And the runner is out at second, all good at first base. So runner will be Mullins at first. One out for the Wolverines now. So the cleanup hitter for Michigan is out now. Yep. Rustich out at second base. Mullins at first on the sacrifice. Yeah, fielder's choice or, there. Yeah, fielder's choice. And Dylan Stanton will come up for the Wolverines. Is this a new new batter for, for Michigan? I think a new hitter got announced. Swings at the first pitch. No, that's still that's still Stanton, isn't it? Yeah, it's still Stanton. Still I'm Stanton. not sure what, uh, unless they brought in, I think they brought in a new pinch runner, oh, actually. You're right. Alfredo Velasquez, that's where it is, is the new runner at first base. Batter is still Stanton. A one pitch from Detay. Outside corner, strike two. Nice change up, low outside part of the zone. No balls, two strikes. The pitch from Detay hit well to center. Huckstorf moves over to right just a touch. Kyle's underneath it. Huck makes the catch, two away. As we've often said, not out of the woods yet. Got to still get Rogers to three home runs. Just a 211 batting average, though. So. Two down, runner at first. Rogers is a right-handed hitter. He's one for four this evening. Dete with a move over to first. Velasquez with a bit of a hesitation before going back to the first base bag. He 
he might get creative. He's straddling the cut of the grass there at first. Detay deals, strike number one. Oof. All right, now the friendly zone extends to Iowa. Nobody in the Michigan bullpen, so it's going to be Barr's game. Sticking with him. Here's the 01. Fouled off over to the right. Good pitch from Detay. That thing was low, but probably in the zone. Hopefully would have been called a strike, but we don't have to worry about it because he fouled it off. It is a strike. Nothing in two. Fastball right at the bottom of the zone. And, and Rodgers likes to chase here. So, I, yeah, this is, uh, this is some sort of an off-speed pitch and just screw him into the ground. Detay comes set. The 0-2. Popped up right side. That will get out of play over towards the Iowa bullpen. Yeah, I'd like the change up, right? I think that's where that, that low fastball, that's what you set up for. Yeah, and I want to I want to see it. That time he's trying to get it off the plate outside. I want to see it down below the zone. So I think he swings right over the top of it All if right. you do that. Or, you know, beats it into the ground and you let Seegers pick it up. You see Raider Tello closely guarding the line. 0-2, popped up on the infield. Merrick Matthews comes over in foul territory. Merrick's got it for the third out. And the Hawkeyes avoid damage after the leadoff walk. Nicely done there to pitch around all that. And good fielding play. Caught a break with the, uh, with the throw not going into the dugout or anything. And now you just need a run. Bottom of the 10th coming up. Iowa can win it with Raider Tello, Davis Kopp, and Reese Moore. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. John Evans and John Leo in the bottom of the 10th inning at Banks. Michigan 2, Iowa 2. Extra innings. Raider Tello will lead it off as he walks to the plate. He's getting the Raider Tello chance. 47 pitches through four innings. I'd love to see just a little bit of patience from the Hawkeye hitters as Barr moves into his fifth inning of work. Tello, Cop, and more. A lot of power out of these three batters. And all you need is one run, but take it any way you can get it. First pitch to Raider. Breaking ball, high, out of the zone. Raider today is hitless. He's 0 for 3, but he was hit by a pitch in the third. One ball, no strikes. Barr continues to pitch for Michigan. High chopper up the middle. The shortstop will cut it off. He'll throw to first base, one down. It's an unusual day for Raider. That's a pitch he usually does something with. And 87 mile an hour right out over the plate. Mm -hmm. Just beat it into the turf instead today. Felt like he almost leaned forward for it. Didn't have total body control. It, just didn't, it looked like a bit of an awkward swing for Raider. Now to bring up Davis Cop. First pitch to Davis. Curveball high. Reese Moore's on deck. The 1 0 delivery. High and out, ball two. Cop is also hitless today. He's 0 for 4. Pick a spot here. If you get one in that tunnel, drive it. 2-0. Low and out. Ball three. Now you take it. Yep. Take, take, take. 
be interesting to see if Cop does get on. Does Iowa pinch run for him? 3-0, catches the outside corner. It's 3-1. and one. Yeah. yeah, and then you... you yeah, in that DH spot, but, you know, kind of where are you with that? Mm -hmm. Got to think about who's in the who's in the dugout and who could run. Here's the three-one to cop. Hit high and deep to right, but foul and out of play. Full count. Connor Hennings would probably be your guy. Yep, that's a good. That's a good pick. Davis trying his best to get on base here. Been held off all afternoon. Full count pitch from Barr as he's still waiting for the sign. He's got it now. He gets on the rubber. Here's the pitch fouled off over to the right again good hang by Davis might be the most pitches bars thrown to any one hitter yeah here's the three two to Davis ooh slapped it foul over to right That had a lot of zip off the bat. Cop just behind it, but he stays alive. Here's another 3-2. Another foul ball over to right. You think that's probably strike three, John, if he doesn't swing at it? It's <laughs> off the plate outside, but, man, it's been called a strike several times today. Based on what we've seen, I, I don't know that I'd have taken it here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Full count pitch. Bar out of the windup. Here it is. Low. Ball four. Davis Cop with the one out walk in the 10th. Love the little bat drop flip there. I mean, if you're ever going to be cocky about a walk, that's the time to do it. What a great at bat. Fouling pitches off. Earned it. And you were right, John. Time called. Connor Hennings comes out of the dugout. He'll go run for Davis Cop. That'll bring up Reese Moore. Reese doubled in the second. A double would be great news for the Hawks here. Two to two, bottom of the tenth. Hennings with a ton of speed. Hawks sent Strohmeyer. I don't know that you'll see Hennings go, but he's got a great lead at first base. First pitch to Reese, swing and a miss, way out in front of the off speed. If he can go down there and get it and time it up, he, he can drive it, but yeah, the time it up part is the key. Again, I'd just rather, much rather see him take that first pitch, that big loopy breaking ball. There goes Hennings, the 0-1, ripped into left center field, down for a base hit. Hennings around second, he's headed to third. He's there with a single of the batter, Reese Moore. Reese Moore goes 103 off the bat, drives it into left center field. Great job of going with that breaking ball that time as it was low and away. Didn't try to pull it and ground out to second. Went with it, just buried it. And again, the winning run, 90 feet away with less than two outs. Here's Gable Mitchell, runners at the corners. Iowa one for three with runners on third and less than two out. Mm -hmm. Looks like Michigan's deciding what they want to do defensively. And they're going to intentionally walk Gable Mitchell to get to Merrick Matthews. Your pregame interview, John. I understand why you do it. I like Merrick in this spot. I do too. Merrick Matthews, freshly inserted into the game. Merrick is a junior from Centerville. Time is called. We'll see Coach Sutherland, the, the wizard, the smart-minded Marty, comes out. Well, and this is too just a... You know, as he gives the fist bump to Merrick, it's just give him, give Merrick that that deep breath. You know, slow down, get it in your funnel, pay attention to what you're doing. Merrick is two for six on the season, has a double and a home run, and five that, RBIs. And that home run went a really, really long ways. Yes, <laughs> there is a ton of pop in the bat. He needs it. He, he could use one that goes a long way. Doesn't need to clear that outfield wall out there. Sack fly would win it. Didn't you? Uh... Didn't you call a game without me last year that had a grand slam 
walk off home run? The first one of the year, John. I Indiana thought, State. I Kyle. Thought, I thought I, I so I deserve to see one. Yes. You're you're behind. I've got a game in hand on you, right? Isn't <laughs> that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean I would love to see him lose one in the hospital going home traffic out there. <laughs> yes. I would actually right. I would love to see him get hit by a pitch too. Okay, I, I, really whoa. I really I really don't care. <laughs> I just want to see. I just want to see Connor Hennings touch home plate yes. this inning and have it count. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bases loaded and one out for Merrick Matthews. First at bat of the game. Corners in for Michigan. First pitch to Merrick. He took it for a strike. Breaking ball down the heart of the plate. Fine. But, well, that's yeah, exactly. I would be uh, a little hypocritical if I said all of a sudden he should be swinging at that one. That's a good take. Now be ready. Matthews, a right-handed hitter. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. That had a lot of movement on it. That was just a great change up there. Fight, battle, and scrap here, Merrick. No balls, two strikes. Bases loaded. The pitch to Matthews. Check swing. Did he go? No, he didn't. One and two. If Wilmus didn't go, he didn't go. Right, right. Thought probably Ben did a, a little while ago, but... So now you've seen three breaking balls in a row or three off-speed pitches in a row. You better watch out. be on your toes to get heated up one time here. Here's the one-two. High, ball two. Breaking ball again. Matthew's confidence should be building a bit. He's worked the count even. And he's seen it. That's the best part yep. for him is now he's seen the pitches, so he kind of knows what it looks like. Two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. Bar comes set. The pitch to Matthews. Ground ball. Base hit into left. Here comes Hennings. He scores. Hawks win. Merrick Matthews, the Hawkeye hero. And Iowa wins it 3-2 to two in 10. Yes. What a walk off. What a moment for Merrick Matthews as he gets the single stuck with it. Boy, Barr just kept going to that well, trying to get the breaking ball. Matthews had seen enough of them, knew what to do. The Hawkeyes, 18th walk-off since 2015 here at Banks. Three to two, Hawks win a thriller as they celebrate out in right field. How about that Hawkeye winner and a happy Friday in Iowa City. Boy, what a uh, what a gutty comeback. And, and that's kind of the, I don't even know, neither team. I mean, it was such a well-pitched game for the most part as teams just hung around, kept doing the right thing, couldn't necessarily take advantage when they got the opportunities. But boy, what a uh, what a clutch come through there for the Hawks to, to get that done there in the 10th inning. We'll take a break. We'll be back with post-game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa wins the series opener over Michigan today. Three to two in extra innings, a walk-off RBI single off the bat of Merrick Matthews. He brings home Connor Hennings, and the Hawks win it three to two. Ben Detay gets the win for Iowa. Good job from him as he came in, but I was just thinking, as you just rattled that off, Connor Hennings scores the winning run on Merrick Matthews. Tell me you tell me you had that on your bingo card. Didn't didn't not, not, on, not on a Friday, that's for sure. Uh, let's take a look at some of the statistics as things get finalized here today. 
Iowa with three runs, seven hits, one error in the field. The Hawks left nine on base. Michigan with two runs, five hits, ten left on base for the Wolverines. Well, how about how about the Iowa bullpen, the the punching bag of the season, comes in and goes five and a third innings, gives up three hits with one walk and five strikeouts. That's more like it. That's exactly the bullpen we expected. Kate Obermuller does enough. You know, you, we, we need more, but but does enough. And then the bullpen comes in and just, you know, not that the Michigan bullpen was bad. Barr was fantastic. But, boy, what a, what an outing there from from everybody that, that got the ball handed to him. Aaron Savory was great. Ben Dete came in and finished him up and, and then just put up another zero or two just to make sure. Well, you get to a, a Friday game like that that goes late. You will get to any game that goes into extras. You probably expect to burn more than four pitchers and more than three out of the bullpen, John. Oh, for sure. And you, you did it in a, in a, in a pretty smooth way because Jack Young will be back tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you won't see Sav. You might not see Ben, but got it done. Yeah. Three to two, Iowa wins it in ten. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. The sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. Iowa takes the opening game of the series over Michigan in a thriller. An extra innings, 3-2 to two win in 10. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, found a way. Congratulations on the win. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, anytime you can get a win on Friday night, doesn't you know, they don't take them away for, for how pretty they are or not pretty they are. So just happy to get out of here with the win. Uh, let's start with the pitching, Coach. Uh, that was that was our highlight up here today. I'm guessing the same for you guys. Well, 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 Cade really started off well. I thought the first three innings is maybe the best he's looked as a Hawkeye. I mean, it was pretty electric in the zone a lot. Um, just a really nice job, and then then just kind of up and got him there in the fifth inning, and um, you know just too many free bases and and things like that. You know, he's to 90 some pitches, and um, they didn't really do a lot offensively against him. He just put him in position to score a couple times with some of the free bases. But then after that, you know, Jack gives up the hit there to the first guy but then after that it's lights out from the pen um i think there was one free base it was just been there in the 10th inning uh, or 11th inning i don't even know how many we went uh t- um so just a great job by them and, and Savory was was electric just did a great job and Ben came in a tougher spot got a big out and you know, we get it out on a bunt you know on a sacrifice bunt you know which was obviously a big play and um, you know I thought we made some really good plays defensively too I thought Michael made a couple Raider made a couple <coughs> excuse me and you know, we challenged the guys. I thought, you know, defensively, we've we played okay. We just haven't played, you know, maybe up to the capability of what we believe we are defensively. And I thought, you know, the last few games, it's been better. We've made some really nice plays and, and um, you know, can't say enough about that, the bullpen, like you said. Yeah. Uh, offensively, Coach, what did you see from your group? You know, just uh, honestly, I thought it was not a bad day. We had some bad luck. You know, we only up with six hits, but we were on the seven hits. We, we were on the barrel all day long. Just had some bad luck when it came to that. And then, you know, unfortunately we we didn't have a lot of just you know really poor at bats but they were you know unfortunately a couple times with runners on third we just didn't didn't do the job you know and and we got to do a better job there you know you feel feel you know kind of happy you know lucky that you got out of there with the win from what you gave up offensively but overall you know I thought Will had a great day obviously Merrick coming he hasn't had a bat maybe since Jackson I don't know when the last time it's been a long time you know and it says a lot about the kid who just stays locked in and you know he doesn't really say boo to anybody you know he um you know he doesn't say the word the s word if his mouth's full of it but you know uh you know for him just to 
be ready to go and, and come in in a tough spot and and uh, just really happy for him and and um, he's a great kid so good good job by him and and we know leading into this weekend listen we may have to do this a little differently than what we've done in the past you know we've been pretty offensive but it's two major guys out of the out of the lineup and and so guys just need to step up and I thought Will did did his job today and then the Merrick there with the big hit there in the tenth got it done all right double header tomorrow coach just a final thought on on preparing for that and what's going to be a long day at the ballpark tomorrow yeah I mean they're they're tough they're tougher days you know you're you're getting here probably for breakfast at 9 a.m. and you're probably not leaving here till 9 or 10 p.m. and it, it's just one of those things where it just starts with game one you can't really worry too much about the second one just just go out hopefully we get a good start from Marcus and and um, you know if he does that we're going to have we're going to be in great position we know they're going to th- throw a really quality pitcher that's been around here for a long time in Denner and and so we'll have our hands full with him but you know we just got to really do a lot of similar things that we did today and and you know those things will you know will fall through we, we always use the term just keep leaning on them right just keep leaning on them and, and you'll get yours sooner or later and um, you know hopefully that the, there's a little bit more of a breakthrough offensively tomorrow congratulations on the win coach yeah absolutely and it's an exciting night here let's uh, hopefully women's basketball takes care of business and and plays well just really excited for their staff and their kids and hopefully uh, hopefully they get it done tonight good luck to them well said coach we'll see you tomorrow thank you associate head coach marty sutherland on our post game show from banks iowa wins it today three to two in 10 innings let's go over some of the highlights full count here it is Line drive up the middle, base hit into center. RBI single for Will Mulfler, and the Hawks have the lead in the second. Obermuller's delivery. Ground ball left side. Seeger's backhand. Jump throw from the hole. Got him at first. How about that play? Seeger's the shortstop. One out, bases loaded. Squaring to bunt is Timbrook, and he missed it. Now a throw down to third. Got him at third base. And that's how you limit the damage is by blowing a squeeze play. Runner takes off, swing and a miss. Throw down to second base. Got him. How about that toss? Reese Moore and the tag. Gable, Money Mitchell, two down. 1-1, hit on the ground. Ooh, Seegers, backhand stop. Long throw to first. Got him again. Seegers, a la Derek Jeter. Two down. This is lined into right. Wilmis coming forward. Ben got it. The runner will not be able to tag from third. Good job to Tay and Wilmis. Bar comes set. The pitch to Matthews. Ground ball. Base hit into left. Here comes Hennings. He scores. Hawks win. Merrick Matthews, the Hawkeye hero. And Iowa wins it 3-2 in 10. Yes. Off to a good start this weekend. We'll have a doubleheader against Michigan tomorrow to wrap up the series. First pitch of game one is at 105. John and I will take to the air at 1230. If you can't make it to the game, we'll have the coverage for you on the Hawkeye Radio Network. We'd really love to see you out here at Banks, though, uh, this weekend. So try to make it on out tomorrow. Weather should be good. And we'll wrap things up with Michigan tomorrow. All right, that'll do it for our coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball today. For my great board op down the line, Michael, thank you very much. Great job as always. My color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Banks where Iowa wins game one of the series 3-2 to two in 10 innings. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. 
The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.